Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, and welcome, welcome, welcome. I know we have so many people joining us from all over the world, hence the three greetings. My name is June Gashui, and today I am here as your MC slash moderator. And because we're talking about engagement and networking, this is where I will read for you my CV. I am an intellectual property lawyer. I'm also a performing artist. I sing, I dance, I act, and I do all sorts of things. I am a TV host, a radio presenter, and the list goes on. I bake banana bread very, very well. You can place your order on the number below, and so on and so forth. But most importantly today, it is my honor and privilege to be your MC. So ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the Kenya Association of Manufacturers Women in Manufacturing annual event. This would have been our gala dinner, but because of the times that we're living in, this is now a virtual edition. Thank you for logging in, and even as you continue to do so, just a few housekeeping rules. We will be projecting this on Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube. And that means we do have a hashtag that we would like you to use, and that is hashtag W-I-M-K-E. That's Women in Manufacturing Kenya, W-I-M-K-E. So please use it, please do engage with us. We'll be able to see your comments, your questions, and just even greet us right now from wherever it is that you are logged on. We did also share with you that we do have a color theme today, so let's just address that now. As you can see, I am honoring exactly what the instructions were. We were asked to follow the theme, which is purple and pink. So of course, being the lawyer that I am, I decided to do a little bit of research, and I asked myself, what does purple mean? So I did a little bit of research, and this is what I found. Purple combines the calm stability of blue and the fierce energy of red. The color purple is often associated with royalty, nobility, luxury, power, and ambition. Purple also represents meanings of wealth, extravagance, creativity, wisdom, dignity, grandeur, devotion, peace pride, mystery, independence, and of course, my absolute favorite, magic. What about pink? Now, the color pink is the color of universal love of one's self and of others, of course. It represents friendship, affection, harmony, inner peace, and approachability. Pink is the official color for little girls and represents sugar and spice and everything nice. Pink is really the sweet side of the color red. So if you didn't know anything about those colors, I see some of our gentlemen logged in, probably wondering what on earth we are speaking about. But today you have learned a couple of things. So I know that some of you took the effort and you did dress up in pink and purple and we would love to see what you're wearing and how amazing you look. So may we ask you, as you engage with us, to take a photo of yourself, a selfie, and place it on whatever platform you're uh, uh, following us from, especially if you're on Facebook, if you're also engaging on Twitter or on LinkedIn, please use the hashtag W-I-M-K-E. So, I'd like to officially welcome all of you. We're going to be having an amazing evening, and we have a lineup of speakers that is incredible. You're going to be triggered, you're going to be excited, you're going to be challenged, because of course, our theme, as we continue in the celebration of the month where we celebrate women, International Women's Day, became International Women's Week, became International Women's Month, and I have a sneaky feeling it's about to become International Women's Year. So of course our theme is Choose to Challenge, and our overall theme of course is how can we inspire hope given the current times that we're living in. So what is your Choose to Challenge um, uh, choice that you have made? What have you challenged yourself to do in the space of inclusivity? Or if you are indeed in the space of manufacturing, what is it that you have done given what we have been experiencing as an entire globe this last uh, 12 plus months? Please share that as you engage with us on either the YouTube, Zoom, or Facebook pages.
Now, we also have at the end of our evening the Women in Manufacturing Recognition Awards. So we'd like you to make sure that you do stay tuned and continue to uh, stay with us even as we feature some of the people who have done an outstanding job within the space of women in manufacturing. And we just want to applaud them and recognize them today. Now, before we kick off this amazing event, we would like to know from you, what do you think needs to be done to enhance the participation of women in the sector? What does that look like for you? We'd love to hear your suggestions. And secondly, please tell us what has been your biggest challenge during this COVID period. Of course, we'd like that in both a professional capacity, but also in a personal capacity if you feel led to do so. And before we get on to our amazing speakers and speeches, let's have a look at who steers the Women in Manufacturing program and what it has achieved so far. Please pay attention to your screens. Thank you. The Women in Manufacturing program was set up in May uh, 2017 in order to increase women participation in the manufacturing sector. We are looking at launching the first ever report done on women in manufacturing in Kenya. I think this is a great milestone uh, for the manufacturing sector in Kenya uh, because data is the point through which you're able to evaluate and make decisions. This report will therefore be able to guide uh, some of the policy decisions towards supporting the manufacturing sector and the women participation within this sector. So this study is going to be important for decision makers, policy makers, uh, the women in manufacturing themselves to be able to understand the dynamics within the sector. So the data here is uh, something that we're very proud to be associated with, uh, considering that it's the first time a study like this is being carried out in Africa. As the Chief Executive Officer of Kenya Association of Manufacturers and someone who founded also the Women in Manufacturing program in May 2017, I feel extremely proud uh, to be associated uh, with this report. When you have a sector that is very heavily male-dominated, the ability to create a platform that can really bring in the other 50% of the population to actively participate in that sector, for me, I think is transformative and uh, something that is going to leave a legacy for the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. Beyond the study, we intend to implement the findings of the study uh, so that we really get the most and have a big impact in terms of transforming uh, the society and really giving those opportunities, creating jobs uh, for women. So it's for me very profound and transformative. I'd like to welcome women in manufacturing, uh, women entrepreneurs who are in the value-add industries in agro-processing to come and join the Women in Manufacturing program at Kenya Association of Manufacturers. We now have a report with clear data that is going to enable us to have very tailor-made solutions to influence policy and enable you to create market linkages and grow your businesses. Come on board. We look forward to having you. excited with the launch of the Women in Manufacturing report. Why? Because it gives us a foundation. One of the issues we have around um, trying to promote gender equity is even having numbers, data collection, has generally been very weak. And again, they say if you don't know what you're measuring, any road can get you there. So when we start knowing and addressing gender parity and setting ourselves targets, then that way we are sure we are going to improve on the gender divide. People will be able to now support it and give it um, a new, well, more impetus. If you look at our demographics, we have a very young um, demographic in Kenya and Africa to say the least. We are turning out one million students into the employment market. You know people are not hiring, government is not hiring, he's an um, absorber of jobs. So where are these people going to get jobs? So I'm like, let us learn and let us build entrepreneurs. So if we start addressing all these, we're going to build, at least we're going to have something for the youth to do when they cannot find their jobs. And we also want them to take pride in entrepreneurship. When I was starting, I keep joking, 25 years ago, it was not a pride moment. 
to say you're an entrepreneur. In fact, people say, you couldn't get a job? What happened? Whereas it was just a burning desire that I had. So I, that, that is why I, would, I want to encourage women, I want to encourage entrepreneurs, and I want to encourage the youth to actually make a difference because they can. During this COVID period, you have seen how many innovative products, because we had time to go on our social media, to go on, our, on, on all our platforms, and you can see how innovative these people are. All they lack is access to market, and that is what we want to do. If we could open these doors for them, the sky is the limit for these children. I mean, I've seen cocktails already mixed in jars. We've seen somebody making jam out of cactus. I mean, there's so much, you know, keto ice cream. There's so much that these people are doing. And welcome back. So you've seen a little bit about what women in manufacturing is about. And of course, now I'd like to formally, formally invite you and welcome all of us. I'd like to recognize the presence of Madam Betty Miner, who is online with us. She is the Cabinet Secretary in the Ministry of Industry and Trade. Welcome very much. We also want to recognize the presence of Chairman, uh, Country Chair, National Chair of Kenya Association of Manufacturers, Mr. Mushai Kunyiha, Chairperson, Kenya Association of Women uh, of Manufacturing, Women in Manufacturing, Ms. Flora Mutai, the CEO CAM, Ms. Phyllis Wakiaga, our esteemed guest speakers, panelists, our esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, welcome, welcome, welcome to this event. Now, we are feeling very generous, and because we are feeling generous, we have a few things that we'd like to give out. And unlike most people who wait until the very end of the party to celebrate and recognize you, we want to do it right now. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna challenge you to respond to some of these trivia questions. Some of you may want to leverage your research skills. Uh, you may want to uh, call a friend. You may want to do all of those things. But if you respond to this question correctly, then we will be giving you a few little gifts as we proceed with our evening tonight. So here is the first trivia question that I would like to pose for you to respond. Use the chat function in your Zoom, uh, in the Zoom platform, in the YouTube platform, and the Facebook platform. Here we go. Who was the first woman MP in Kenya? A little bit of history trivia. Who was the first woman MP in Kenya? Please also let us know where she was serving as an MP. First, the name of the first woman MP and where she was serving. Let's see if we can get that as a correct answer. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, we would now like, I can see a lot of comments coming in. All right, are these, are these people who got leakage? Let me see, let me see, let me see. Either your internet speeds are very fast, Google is your friend. How quickly have you responded? All right, pretty much everybody seems to have gotten this answer correct. The answer is Honorable Grace Onyango, and she was the MP for Kisumu Town constituency. So congratulations, class of 2021. You have all gotten the answer correct. But of course, Nancy Mumbu, I see you. You've gone a little bit extra as our index one, and you've even given us the year, 1969, she says. So I'm going to ask our friends to let us know who the first, is that the correct answer? All right, because Nancy Mumbo did the absolute most. You are our winner of our very first gift uh, for a correct and complete answer of our trivia this evening. All right, so I'd like to now introduce our host, the Kenya Association of Manufacturing CEO, Ms. Phyllis Wakiaga. Welcome, Phyllis. Thank you, thank you, June, and uh, good evening, everyone. I, I hope you...
Association of Manufacturers Chairman, Mushai Kunyiha. We appreciate your support to the women in manufacturing. Flora Mtai, the Chair of Women in Manufacturing. We also want to appreciate our key guest speakers who will be speaking later today. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Sanda and Sadia, all the way from Canada and America. We also have the panel that have joined today. Um, thank you so much, Marianne, Jadida, and uh, Amina and Shiro. We appreciate you. We also want to welcome all the people who have joined us from our online platforms. I'm seeing people on through the YouTube channel, Facebook Live, and also here. And we want to welcome you all. So as we start this dinner, I want us all to choose to challenge. This month, I've been saying that I choose to challenge biases. I choose to challenge stereotypes. And I choose to challenge the status quo so that we see the transformation we want to see. And the Women in Manufacturing has been seeking to do exactly that since we set it up, assisting women in manufacturing and women in business to be able to grow. We are creating a lot of opportunities for them. And I know the chair will speak in detail about these opportunities when she speaks. But myself, I was welcoming you all on board and wishing you all a good evening. Thank you for those who stuck to the color scheme. Please take your photo and post it for us. And we'll be able to, uh, at some point, recognize and appreciate you. So thank you so much. We welcome you all. And we wish you all an engaging evening. Karibu sana. Thank you very much, Phyllis. Thank you for welcoming us. And thank you, most importantly, for hosting us. We do remain hopeful that in the near, near future, we will be able to host a physical event, see each other, model, and just, I miss, I miss touching people. I miss hugging people. I miss our human contact. So, and I know I'm not alone in that. So allow me now to invite the one person who was allowed to hang out with me here, the <laughs> the chair of women in manufacturing Ms. Flora Mutai to make her remarks as she comes up I'd like you to appreciate how amazing this lady looks she and I could be models uh, it's not even a joke you're smiling but you wait until you see Ms. Flora please allow them to see how <laughs> thank you so much could we have a Flora I wanted to have a quick conversation with you if we could that's all right somebody will get it so Flora and I have been having conversations around how important it is for us to have an elevator pitch and that it should be in our back pockets, it should be in our handbags, it should be ready at any one time because you never know who you might encounter, who could add value to your business, who could be your next investor. And for that reason, I want to see if she's not just challenging us to have one, if she has one herself. So Ms. Flora Mutahi, I am investor extraordinaire, Madam June, who is the richest person in the universe. You meet me in the elevator. Your time starts now. Good afternoon, or good evening, June. Hi, Flora. What Hi. is your name? My name is Flora Mutahi. Mm -hmm. I'm a seasoned entrepreneur. I'm a leader. Uh, I've broken many firsts. I um, did the first flavored tea in the market, first um, fla uh, free-flowing salt in the market. And now, as, as I continue to grow that, uh, I was also the first female chair of Kenya Association of Manufacturers, a very male-dominated area. And now I'm passionate about women, I'm passionate about uh, youth, and especially those in manufacturing. And what I do now is I want to mentor them, carry them along to continue growing. Okay, so how do we think Ms. Flora did? She told us who she was, what she's done, what she's achieved, the very many firsts that she has been able to pioneer. But you haven't asked me for anything, Flora. Would you like money from me? Would you like me to buy your products? Well, considering um, your networks and um, everywhere I've been seeing you and your deep pockets, yes, I yes. would appreciate um, a partnership with you mm. um, so that I could use your networks to continue to grow my business. Okay. Well, let's go have a cup of your tea. <laughs> yes, I do. And I have it right here. <laughs> Very well done. <laughs> and you did that in under two minutes. So, <laughs> Flora... Thank you so much and welcome for you to be able to present your remarks and we'll be right back. Remember to continue engaging with us and using the hashtag WIMKE, Flora. 
And June, let me just comment. I liked your elevator pitch Thank because you. you told us who you are. You yes. told us you like baking. Yes. But within a minute, I, I know if I needed somebody to make a, a, a presentation, if I needed somebody to, you know, to host a show, voila. Merci so beaucoup. I keep, telling, I keep telling women, be prepared. Yes. You don't know who you're going to meet. And be unapologetic. It's not called bragging. That's it's true. It's called pitching and marketing yourself. But as women, we're supposed to be modest. Who said that? Well, that's how we were brought up. Well, th you? this is what I'm choosing to challenge us all to do. Modesty was for so last century. Be bold. Be bold. Choose to challenge. Choose to challenge. Lovely. Miss Flora Wutai, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So good evening. Um, it's so sad I can't see all of you yet, but um, they're telling me in no time, once we're done, we will be able to actually um, see everybody and how they're all dressed up. Before I begin, let me begin. This was done by Kawera uh, Mambo Pambo. Why I want to call her out is because I ordered this dress exactly last year. And then, remember, we, we, we canceled the WIM dinner, and I had nothing. I, I, I just called and said, the dinner's been canceled. I was not even polite enough to go and pick it up. I picked it up this morning. So imagine what this whole season has done to people, what it has done to businesses. It's, it's really, really unfortunate, and I just wanted to call her out because she was so patient. I went in there today. She said, oh, we'll just tuck here, and oh, have you added weight? Have you lost weight? And we are done. So... Um, let me begin with welcoming um, our CS, Betty Miner, who um, is a good friend and actually I served in her board when, when she was the chair of uh, CAM. Um, the UN Global Executive Director, Sanda Ojiambo, another good friend. President and founder of Global Women in Manufacturing in Canada, Ms. Sadia Lakel. Whoa. Uh, our, our current chair, national chairman, Mushai Koniha, Phyllis Wakiaga, good friend. Um, the Women in Manufacturing Steering Committee, I'll give you a story about them, very dear to my heart. Women industrialists, ladies and gentlemen, again, good evening. And for those of you who are not dressed, please go and take this moment to go and get dressed. Thank you for jo joining us as we celebrate our Women in Manufacturing. This is a program that we established in 2017 when I was, I was the chairperson of um, the association. And w it came out because Phyllis and I were sort of like, we noticed a gap. Every time we're saying, let's look for the women to speak here. Let's look for the women to, 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 you know, to do anything with. And we realized there are a handful. Yet we all know that women manufacture a lot. Think about any woman in your life. Think about 10. Who makes crisps around the corner? Somebody is sewing. Somebody had a side hustle. Um, right now, during this whole pandemic, I know somebody who mixes, um, you know, soaps and stuff. So we noticed we don't have a place where we, can, we where we have um, a group of women. The second reason we we chose to to actually start this program is the ones we had did not have a place to share their ideas. They didn't have a place to sort of um, br you know brainstorm and request for more. And remember now, of course, we are in a male-dominated area. So sometimes you want to show up as a group and say, "We women have this challenge," and that is the reason actually that um, this whole thing um, began. And our vision was actually to see more women participate in the sector, in senior leadership roles, um, as owners, as founders, as women. We also wanted them to scale their businesses because as much as I'm saying women, um, they have several businesses, yes, but at what level? Women start businesses perhaps just to pass time or just to get a little bit of food on the table. We want to challenge them to start global huge businesses where, they, where you know, like the men do. Men start businesses just to be big. We envision seeing more women venture into uncharted territories in, in the manufacturing sector. I mean, pharmaceutical, why aren't they there? Um, engineering, steel plants, you know, the real hard, hard equipment. We don't see women. And on our journey towards achieving this dream, it's been challenging, but it's been fun. And most importantly, we've made a lot of friends and a lot of collaborations with a lot of people. I think it was just an idea in its right time. We have achieved many milestones, um, the greatest being the report that you heard, um, I think, in the preview, in the video that was up here. Um, that report, report has helped us because what, what doesn't get measured doesn't get, get, get um, what, is the, what, what does he say? If it's not measured, it's not counted. 
So what, what we did is we had a foundation, we did a nice baseline study, we know what our numbers are, and we are able then to start challenging ourselves to see whether this product, whether this women in manufacturing program is really helping. And I can already tell you it is. So every year we do celebrate the dinner, and so far we've hosted two. This is our third one. As you heard, we cancelled last year. And um, it, we brought in a lady, one was from uh, South Africa, a large steel magnet. Um, she, was, she was wonderful. She had these high heels. And she said she used to actually, you know, go to meetings with the high heels. And then two minutes later, she's the engineer on the ground delivering the steel. So we had a lady from Ghana who was doing cables. We then had a lady from Nigeria who was making all the credit, credit, um, credit cards, the plastic cards, in, um, in, the, in, in Southern Africa and part of the ECOWAS. So this is the third program. Unfortunately, due to the situation we are in, we decided we're not canceling, but we're going to go virtual, which I think is great to have only June and I in the room. Um, so what does the, the program do? It advocates for an inclusive manufacturing sector through establishment of policies and policy incentives that encourage women to be key players and, and, um, in, in, the val in the supply chain. The program gives us a platform to link up with other successful industrialists to, you know, in the continent, a place to network, a place to benchmark, a place to, to, to go, and, go out and learn. It also seeks to en 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 enhance market linkages. You know, a group of women in the fashion industry would want to come to, uh, to, to look at what is happening in this area. And we know what happened during um, this pandemic, thanks to CS Betty Minor and, and the government, they gave a lot of our women in manufacturing an opportunity to, to, to actually supply um, quite a lot, especially masks, you know, to the country. So through CAM, women in, in, in um, industry, it's also, uh, we also advocate for policy and policy in instruments to actually enter and to access markets. And, um, you know, nothing wrong with asking for some preferential treatment until we get some equality on the table. We also seek to create financial linkages for women. Last year, we partnered with GIZ, we partnered with banks, um, and... Um, and we continue to do this, and especially partnering with them to really share with them what the challenges are for women, to really challenge them and ask them, can we only have collateral-based lending? Isn't it time we started looking at other ways of lending to women, which, as you know, women do repay their loans. So I do think we need um, some better grace. The other thing we do, we also have capacity-building programs. Um, including coaching and mentoring. Um, I know we've been to Isuzu, East Africa, um, share, looking at best in class. We've been to BOAC gases um, to understand the Kaizen principles. We've been to um, several, se several, several. I know we've, um, we've, we've actually gone to, B well, we've had a talk with Betty, with Beverly Spencer of BAT, where she was sharing her personal experience as a woman in manufacturing. And through CAM's um, technical and vocational education, uh, the TIVET program, we mentor young women to take up and soar in the science, technology, arts, and mathematics. Because remember, if we don't grab them young, then we don't get them at all. So ladies, last year, we were faced with a pandemic that we would never have imagined. We saw women at the forefront in their homes. We saw women at the forefront in the health facilities. But unfortunately, Women's businesses, which tend to be the smaller ones, are the ones that were really put to, to task. Um, and actually, we could, I, I think it would be correct to say that women were disproportionately affected by this pandemic. It is also, it, it, the, the pandemic also really amplified the gender gap. And being International Women's Month, today we shall highlight and share stories of women who have chosen to challenge ladies I might ask each one of you, have you chosen to challenge? I'll tell you um, an example of we, what we went through just planning this event. We started, you know, February, no, January. We're going to have an event. Yes, we're going to have a gala dinner. Um, three weeks ago, we're going to have a gala dinner. You know, we started selling tickets. And we had gone to the hotel, of course, in the COVID protocols of 100 people. And we are off in our merry way. Two weeks ago, um, um, no, this dinner might not happen, let's go virtual, let's go hybrid, have a few people in the room, continue to have a dinner and dance. And then just this week, it was a, it was, we made a decision to actually go, um, you know, fully virtual. Why am I telling you this? I had a steer, we have a steering committee, and that steering committee were on call right through. We had calls 
through Saturdays, through Sundays, just to decide what do we do, how we do we navigate this space. Because one thing was, for, was clear. We didn't want to walk away and leave our women just to navigate this space alone. We understand everybody's going through this, and we want to share, and we want to leave all these other women here with, I mean, we want to hear their stories. How have they coped? Because as you know, this pandemic is still with us. So my team was able to be agile. They were able to help me refocus. They were able to help us reinvent, reinvent this event to what it is today. So I, I, I think what, 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 what is most important is for us to be uh, in, in our businesses to make sure that we're able to be agile, we're able to refocus, we're able to navigate what we would call um, these unprecedented times. Tonight, we shall learn from extraordinary women. And I, I welcome you all to an evening filled with inspiring stories, strong networks, as we hold each other's hands to soar in these industries. Ladies, I'd like to thank you for, you know, um, coming into the show. I would, I would like, well, it's not a show, <laughs> the gala dinner. Um, let us enjoy it. And let me leave you with some words of a lady I deeply, deeply admire. She says, we have been presented with an opportunity to reimagine to redesign our society into a vibrant and equitable one. We must place women at the core of the response and beyond. This is Gracia Michelle herself. Ladies, good evening, and um, let's continue having some fun. Thank you, thank you so much. Flora Mutahi. You can actually give her a round of applause. We can see your hands. Yes, we don't need to hear them. We can see them. And if you're with us on the Zoom, you can, you know, you, you, this is uh, how we learn about technology. There's a function on Zoom that can allow you to raise your hand and to clap. Let me see how many of us will get it. Let's see us clapping for that amazing, mm -hmm, like good students. We are focusing, we are searching. It's about to happen. I see five hands. How about the one for clapping? Is it there? Do we have the clapping function? Okay. Well, good. 14, 15. Okay. You all have found the actual button to press. So well done. Thank you. Thank you once again, Flora, for those inspiring words. As you were sharing the words of Grasa Barshel, I was like, did I say those things? I want one day to be able to say deep uh, triggering and emotional and, and challenging things. So I hope I do. I hope I do meet that particular criteria one of these days. So I want to just uh, take a moment to just thank uh, the sponsors who have made this possible because we do not operate in a vacuum and it was with partners that we're able to achieve our dreams and this was truly a dream as Flora has shared. So thank you to BAT Kenya, thank you to Safaricom who are our sponsors and of course women in manufacturing. You can see their logos behind me here and of course the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, our hosts today. I understand that you have been doing an amazing job on Twitter and all the other platforms because we are trending. Hello. So well done. Uh, the hashtag WIMKE is at number six. Could we try and get it to number one? I think we have enough power to, and I'm choosing to challenge. I think this was the symbol. We are at six. Let's choose to challenge us to get to number one. All right. So we will proceed with the next speaker and of course a good friend a good um, uh, supporter of all my little biasharas a good um, shall I say uh, person who is always in the audience at any opportunity that presents itself for her to be able to be there and for that I am grateful to one Sanda Ojiambo. So let me tell you a little bit about Sanda, our speaker this evening. Ms. Sanda Ojiambo is the UN Global Compact Executive Director. And she has 20 years of experience in various leadership roles. B before this particular role that she is currently holding, she was the head of sustainable business and social impact at Safaricom PLC Kenya since 2010. She has also led uh, the implementation of several public-private partnership initiatives between Safaricom and various UN organizations and throughout her career. 
Sander has cultivated and managed relationships and key business with key business entities and civil society organizations. And that's something we've been talking about and we will continue to be talking about, leveraging our networks and our relationships. And she has done this in an excellent manner. She has also continued um, in, her in her capacity development work in Somalia with UNDP and Care International. She holds a Master's of Arts in Public Policy from the University of Minnesota in the USA and a Bachelor of Arts in Economics and International Development from McGill University in Canada. I also found out that about seven years ago this September, Sanda climbed a particular mountain and she said it was, if I recall, tough but joyous. So I wonder if this current role that you're playing is anything compared to the climb of Mount Kilimanjaro. With those few words, welcome Ms. Sanda Ojiambo. Thank you, June. Thank you so much for that kind welcome and for digging into my past, reflecting on those five days spent uh, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. A real challenge, a, a real mental challenge, I must say. Um, to those here, uh, CS Betty Minor, the CAM chair, all the CAM representatives, the ladies and gentlemen, business leaders, friends who are in the audience, you know, first, thank you so much, Flora and, and Phyllis, for inviting me to this event. It's morning where I am in New York, but it's just great to be able to connect with you and feel like I'm back home, albeit virtually, and really good to be amongst familiar faces. So, you know, you asked me to speak a little bit about gender and choosing to challenge from the perspective of the UN Global Compact. And I thought I'd state some facts. And I think that many of you in this room and in this audience and through your businesses certainly represent those facts. Um, the business case for gender equality and for women's participation is clear. Um, these inclusive mechanisms for women's participation certainly result in inclusive outcomes for communities, for business, for economies and certainly for the country. We know that women's participation and leadership in business is essential for driving economic and financial importance. Studies show that companies with high female representation have annual returns that are nearly 3% higher than less diverse businesses. And in fact, it's been estimated that $28 trillion could be added to the global GDP by 2025, simply through investments in gender equality. And yet, as Flora has alluded to, in spite of these facts, we find ourselves in a world where women continue to face high barriers to economic and business inclusion. We find ourselves in a world where statistics are such that the gender pay gap, for example, is stuck at 16% globally and rises to as high as 34% in some low and middle income countries. I could dwell on more of the, the challenges that we face, but I think we can also look and focus at the opportunities I think yourselves here gathered as, as women in manufacturing and certainly through CAM and other bodies that aim to promote women in business have demonstrated there is immense opportunity. It is clear though, yes, that women working in male dominated industries face pervasive negative stereotypes, lack of mentorship and career development opportunities, and often what we don't talk about, sexual harassment and harassment in the workplace. I applaud the organizers for training your eye on providing this much needed mentorship, support and inspiration for women in manufacturing. In her comments, Flora shared several examples of the fantastic mentorship, exposure and partnership opportunities that CAM already does. Personally, I'm a firm believer in the notion that you cannot become what you have not seen. And I'm very sure that this gathering today will encourage and inspire many. In keeping with the theme of this International Women's Day, I think we all can and must choose to challenge gender bias and inequality and choose to highlight and celebrate women's achievements. I can attest to this from personal experience. At a personal level, I can't tell you how many times I've walked into a meeting and been mistaken for the person assisting rather than leading the meeting or being questioned or being mansplained through meetings. But forging on, I and I know many of you have continued to choose to challenge. But the truth is, seemingly small encounters like this can have a profound impact on women, leading them to question their competency and their hard-earned success. And this destructive dynamic must end because we know that everybody wins when women participate. I also firmly believe that women have the intellect, the drive, the skill set, 
for viable and sustainable and full participation in all elements, all elements of the economy. But what is missing is not empowerment. Um, what is really missing is meaningful participation opportunities. And I think we need to move beyond the notion of that we need to empower women, but more that we need to definitely make space for women, make space for women on the table, in the workplace, in the business space, in industry, and ensure equal and active participation by women. So in line with the theme of choose to challenge, I wanted to highlight just a few priority areas that I think are imperative for addressing these opportunities for women. The first is continuing to look at and review and repeal any policy barriers or barriers that really impact women's effective participation. The second, as I said earlier, is really ensuring equal and meaningful participation. I know sometimes we train our eye on the figures and the numbers of women around the table. My question is how meaningful and how impactful is the space that we have created for women to participate? And what is that table? Is it a leadership table? Is it a management table? Is it a table where key decisions are being made, where investments are being decided and where resources are being allocated? The third is ensuring equal access to technology, financing and innovation for women. And the fourth, again, something Flora alluded to earlier, is full and proper evaluation of women's contribution to the care economy. Um, in this COVID period, I know all of us have juggled multiple balls to keep people going from families to communities, to businesses, and certainly to the economy. So my call to action today is really for businesses to take a keen look at the extent to which they fully and truly support women across some of these key parameters. Because I have the floor, I'd like to say for any business that wants to take an introspective look at this, I'd guide you towards what's called the Women's Empowerment Principles, which are developed by the UN Global Compact in partnership with UN Women. And we use this tool to guide companies on how to advance gender equality across their operations and value chains. I know there are many businesses in Kenya that are already doing that, and we need more. So I'd encourage all businesses to take the lead from what Flora's already explained that CAM and women in manufacturing is doing and move this further across industry. So allow me to conclude by saying how important it is to choose the challenge. For the current, it is important to be able to demonstrate that indeed inclusive decisions result in inclusive outcomes. But for the future, it is equally important to create pathways for the generations to come. So thank you for all that you do for women in manufacturing and for the Kenyan economy and I just wish you a fruitful and successful business journey as you continue to navigate this COVID recovery and COVID response period. Thank you all very much. A round of applause. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Sanda Ojiambo, for such a powering, empowering speech. Take a key look as businesses introspect because an inclusive discussion will result in inclusive outcomes. Thank you for gracing our event. We appreciate you taking the time to inspire women in manufacturing and waking up and having your breakfast time with us. And of course, for those of you who are logged on or just joining us, please continue to share your comments with us on Zoom, Facebook, and Twitter. We are on Facebook Live. Uh, we are on YouTube as well. And we'd like to hear from you um, if you have any comments about the, the, the guest speaker that we've just listened to, Ms. Sanda Ojambo. Please do let us know. We also asked you a couple of questions um, in order for us to be able to award some things to you, but also to get a sense of how you're feeling right now. What is it that COVID-19 and the current pandemic that we're in has challenged you to do? How have you had to reinvent yourself as our uh, chairperson of uh, the Women in Manufacturing shared? Even just putting this event together was a challenge in reinvention and having to come back to the table and work together and collaborate to make sure that you achieve the outcome that is possible. So continue engaging with us, please, um, on our social media platforms and use the hashtag WI. I am K E. What has been your biggest challenge during the COVID period? Now, the show is just starting, as you heard. I had a feeling that Flora was about to ask me to sing, and since I'm marketing myself, I will. But let's take a little break and watch an amazing story of a woman in manufacturing at BAT. Thank organization you. in a factory where there was 650 men and me. I'm a chemical engineer by training and I've been 
in the manufacturing sector for 15 years now uh, as a woman in manufacturing. I've always wanted to be an engineer from when I was class 7, about 13 years old. Many of the girls, by the time they finish even high school and they're going into the tertiary education, they would prefer not to choose the science courses. So ideally, there are less number of women in the science and technology space as, as career women because maybe the aspect of not being accepted in some sectors, maybe the culture in the different organizations is still not very um, accommodating of women. So some women would shy off and change career. Most of the time you would go into a room and you're the only woman. As a matter of fact, my first job, I worked in an organization in a factory where there was 650 men and me. So they would want to give you the lighter jobs and so you would want to tell them no, I'm actually up to the task. And when they would entrust you in doing a small job and you do it, then they'll be like, okay, maybe we can give her another job. So what I would first recommend to the organizations is to understand why women do not apply for many of the roles which come up in science and technology and therefore make their job specification to accommodate uh, women applicants in the first place so that you can have a pool to start from with more women. It's a culture change for most of the organizations and most of the people I've worked with because they're not used to having women around. So it's something which I've seen uh, growing and basically more and more industries are accepting women in, in the manufacturing space. Amazing, what an amazing story by Joy Shivo, production manager at BAT. Exactly, a round of applause. We also think about women in manufacturing is actually a double entendre. There's women who work within manufacturing organizations, and then there are women who lead uh, organizations uh, or start up enterprises that are within the manufacturing space. And I think that was such an interesting perspective. And as Flora said earlier, we have to get our young girls early so that they're not afraid of STEM, they're not afraid of some of these subjects and taking on challenges like Joy has taken. Thank you, Joy, for sharing that. An amazing, amazing story for sure. Now, just a quick reminder, we did say we want to continue with our generosity. We did give out um, to Nancy Mumbo, I believe, was the first person who answered our first trivia question correctly. And we are going to give you a little package from Qual, Kenya Wine Agency Limited. And they have sponsored us with their premium drink offer such as Scottish Leader 12 Years Whiskey, Amarula Cream, and Durbanville Hills Wine. These drinks will be issued as gifts after our virtual engagement to all our lucky participants. So if that is not inspiring enough, because it's Friday tomorrow, um, you may want to respond to my second trivia question. And here it is. Who was the first female mayor in Nairobi. Who was the first female mayor in Nairobi or of Nairobi? Let us see what your responses are across the various platforms. I see here, mm -hmm, our index ones are back on the Google platform searching. And our answers are coming in. Our very first answer is by Phoebe O'War. Okay, I see the answers are coming in. Margaret Kenyatta, Margaret, okay. Margaret is a personal friend, yes. Margaret Kenyatta, can we see what year? I'd like all her full names. So Carol has given us Margaret Wamboy and Esther Gitao has given us all three names. Margaret Wamboy Kenyatta. So congratulations to Esther Gitao. Your perseverance has earned you a bottle of something for tomorrow. And we will be awarding those. Thank you so much, Kenya Wine Agency Qual, for giving us uh, amazing drinks to award our lucky participants. Remember that this is a company that has a diversity agenda for a fair representation of people of different genders to have 50-50 representation by 2025. That's their goal. And as we continue, BAT has been with Kenya Association of Manufacturers, and in particular the Women in Manufacturing program, supporting us throughout the years. And 
this has been truly, truly appreciated. And of course, this then brings me to our next speaker. And it's my pleasure to introduce Connie Anyika. Connie Anyika has been with BAT for the last 14 years. She's worked in East Africa, the United Kingdom, in Hong Kong, and of course has played various senior roles, recently returned back home in January of this year, so very, very recently, to take up the role of Director External Affairs. She's a passionate person about people and a true believer of sponsorship, coaching, and mentorship. I want all of you who are logged in to listen carefully. She's a true believer of sponsorship, coaching, and mentorship. In her free time, she takes guitar lessons with the aim of staging a musical performance someday. Connie and I will certainly be speaking after this, and is currently pursuing an executive MBA with the IMD Business School in Lausanne, Switzerland. Now, something, of course, I was doing a deep dive on everybody, as you probably have figured out by now. And so, Connie, when I typed your name in the wonderful world of the World Wide Web, the wild, wild west, all I could find that was not associated to your professional career was your name on a lot of uh, athletics pages. Are you a, a runner? What are we running from? What are we running towards? And I see some of your time here, 45 minutes, you are running around Croydon, around Surrey. Is this the same Connie Anika? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Connie Anika, Director, External Affairs at BAT Kenya. Karibu sana. Thank you, June. You know, I, I think I have uh, many lives. Um, yes, indeed, I love running. Uh, it's a passion of mine. Uh, it's something that helps me more or less manage uh, my stress levels. Um, so when I was living in London, uh, you'd find me running more or less around Richmond. So um, if you want to run with me, come along. Um, I've, I've also done the uh, Mara Lewa Safari Com challenge. So um, do you run? Do you see me smiling? <laughs> I walk fast. <laughs> I walk very fast. Yeah. If you chase me, I will run. Long distances and I were not very good friends, but short distances, I could probably out sprint you. But let's, let's yeah. meet and talk. As you're playing the guitar and I'm singing, after that we will take uh, uh, a little time to run and compete against each other. So thank you for the uh, invitation. Yeah. <laughs> And you're spot on because one of the things that I'd love to learn from this forum is, um, you know, people have so much diverse and different experiences. So um, I'm learning how to play the guitar. Um, you obviously have a career more or less in the theater. So I'll, I'll be knocking on your door to ask you, how do I stage this musical performance? And it started off more or less as a joke and it has now become a serious bet. Um, so I'll be looking forward to some of your um, ideas and maybe thoughts to help me more or less land this bet. <laughs> I'll be waiting for your call. <laughs> okay, thank you. So um, I'm happy to be back home. Um, it's been a wonderful experience, more or less um, the exposure that I've had. Uh, and, and this has come because of uh, BAT. And, and for me, the person I am today uh, also reflects the company that I have worked for. Um, having worked in Kenya, in East Africa, the UK, and Hong Kong, this journey has been absolutely amazing simply because of the opportunities that have been availed to me. But the opportunities also came along because of what I said is um, important to me, sponsorship, mentorship, and coaching. I am the woman I am today because of this. My very first line manager practically created a platform for me to be able to grow in the business. And other women in the business that I looked up to um, who also achieved uh, senior level uh, positions, who some are still in BAT and also some have left. So we're a proud exporter of talent, but this was also a reflection of the women, people that you can look up to and the conversations that you also have with them. And also in BAT, we had the very first female managing director from BEV, you know, and that to me was also a reflection that a woman can also become a managing director um, within BAT. And that was the very first in BAT. So to me, these are some of the personal reflections that I look at and I ask myself, what am I contributing and how do I pay this forward? So I reflect on what Sander has said. 
And, and one of the things that resonates very well for me working in BAT is that BAT is also a signatory of the UN Global Compact. This is important to me from a value perspective. I recently turned 40 last year in a COVID year, and it also offered an opportunity to, for me to reflect what is my impact and what is my legacy. At the same time, BAT was also evolving its strategy, looking at how we address uh, more or less the expectations from society and how do we create a better tomorrow. So for me, there was a perfect fit in terms of what am I looking for as an individual in terms of my legacy and impact and the journey that BAT is also more or less going through. And to me, I find myself more or less reflecting on this. How, how, how do these two things fit together as a woman and what are these opportunities that are availed to me in BAT and also how do I use them? Um, the other thing that I also reflected upon um, having a very difficult COVID year was how are we responding to the challenges that present itself um, given the challenges that we as employees, uh, we as family members, women, sisters, mothers are facing um, during COVID. And again, when I look back and I reflect on BAT's ethos, being bold, being fast, being empowered and responsible, how did we respond to the needs um, in the community? They resonated very well with me as an individual, how we were able to rise up and actually reflect our participation and respond to the societal needs. Um, and, and this being very important to me, I look back uh, reflecting on what I have seen um, in Kenya and East Africa, I, I commend everybody who has walked before me, uh, Bev and the team that I found here. Um, I was very proud to be back and to say that, you know, I am working for BAT and this is the contribution that we're having um, in society. The other thing that I also look back, um, diversity and inclusion um, and how we are trying to empower women and build more uh, women and try and ensure that we have more women in leadership positions. Um, I left BAT Kenya when there was actually one woman in the leadership team, uh, Lina Githuka, who then left. I come back and I find there are actually three women. And obviously, this to me is actually very important um, because it's a reflection of the commitment of the walk the talk. There is a very deliberate effort to ensure that there are women in leadership positions in BAT. But I also know that I also have friends outside of BAT because I see where they are um, and the leadership positions that they have also taken up. Um, and and I, I think we are actually a great exporter of talent looking at where they are. Uh, we've, we've seen people who have passed through BAT who are now MDs, um, very good friends, people that I've also looked up to, people who actually guided me to where I am today. And it goes back to what I've said, what am I passionate about? Sponsorship, mentorship and coaching. The opportunities that I've had today, how am I using them to pay forward? And one thing I'd like to say and leave for the audience today is how can I help? Can I connect you with somebody? Do you want me to coach you? Is there a network that I can build? And, and I think this is basically what I can offer. And I think this is also a challenge for us women here in the positions that we sit. How do we create this network um, in the positions that we are currently holding? You know, if you look back, we've always heard of a boys club. Where, where is the women's club? Um, are we willing to put out our neck or our names for somebody to ensure that we are sponsoring them, we are coaching them, um, or we are providing that network that they need? So these are my reflections. And this is the challenge that I give myself in everything that I do. So again, going back to what has BAT provided? What are we doing? Diversity and inclusion. Um, obviously, reflecting back on the programs that Bev and team had put in place, absolutely amazing, working. Uh, a testament to her legacy is the three women that she has left behind in terms of the leadership team. And the many more women that we see in science, innovation, and technology. They're taking a step to challenge, challenge the status quo, because we believe that we can, and we've also been empowered. So for me, the other thing I also think about is how I, 
own it? How do I accelerate it? Particularly looking at the new normal. Um, amazing that we're having this function virtually. So how am I owning my own development? How am I preparing myself for the new normal that will come? So while I am provided with the sponsorship, the mentorship and the coaching, what role do I have to play in that journey? So for my own reflection, for me, it was part of how do I also develop myself? How do I knock the door? How do I seek the coaches? And how do I look for the mentors? Um, I've seen that Rita is also on call. I called Rita immediately, I came here and I told Rita, our chairperson, I want you to coach me. I want you to mentor me. She didn't ask me to do it, but I called her. And it, it was more or less, I need to walk the journey that you have walked. I, I want to learn from you. So I, I think my, my challenge to the women here is, what are you going to do? How do you own your own development journey? And which doors are you going to knock? So I truly believe in knock and the door shall be opened. If it's not opened, knock on another one. So for me, that's what I'd, like, I'd love to leave this platform with. Um, we're here to share, we're here to learn, but it's also a reflection. What are you going to do to empower other women given the opportunities that you have been given or given the opportunities that you currently have where you currently are stationed in life? Thank you. Wow, what a challenge. <laughs> I'm asking myself, how do I own? What is it that I'm doing? And, and thank you for those words, Connie, because it's, they're so simple yet so powerful. How do we own what opportunity and what are we doing in the time, the present time that we're in? What, we don't have to wait for another five or 10 years, but currently today in our present time, how are we choosing to challenge ourselves? And I love what you said about taking that initiative and being bold and seeking out coaches and seeking out people you can, who can mentor you and who can also be mentored by you. And, and, and I think there's no shame in that because we learn by sharing what we have all collectively um, come through and experience. So thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that journey um, with us. And I really look forward to your performance. I think everybody here does as well. We'll make sure that there'll be a virtual link and we'll see how good these guitar lessons are actually sounding. I mean, I can sing, girl, so you know, you know, <laughs> the challenge here is, you know, if we can work together and I believe, I believe that we can. So we have sought each other out. So thank you. That was BAT Kenya's Director of External Affairs, Ms. Connie Anika. Thank you so much. I can see so many of you engaging with us on our Facebook platform. I see Beryl Bear saying great conversations going on. Nancy Mumbo, our first winner, saying listening to these stories from women in manufacturing is so inspiring. We also have a he for she here, Mohammed Haji, who says very inspiring stories. So continue to engage with us across the various platforms. Remember our hashtag is WIMKE. And I challenged us earlier to be able to move up from number six. We are now at number three. So it's working, but the number I asked for was number one. So keep at it, keep posting, keep tagging, take photos. I'm still waiting to see a photo of a guy or a wonderful lady in a purple or pink or both. Uh, outfit with our hashtag. So please keep doing that. On YouTube as well, we have um, some comments here from Sandra Mochoge. Simon Jogona says, following closely the conversations on Twitter, uh, choose to challenge massive words. You hear that, ladies? Your words are massive. Helen Bosire has just given you hand claps to all of you. Kathy Kathy says, will this be recorded? We are in uh, the digital age. So most likely, yes, but I will confirm for you shortly. So I'd like us now to continue paying attention to our screens. We have another video of an amazing story from another lady at BAT. And I don't want to say more. I would like you to watch and listen. These are unprecedented times uh, and I think as a business leader it was very important for us to regroup as a team uh, and make sure that first of all we had some very good contingency plans in place to keep the business moving during these difficult times. So number one was to make sure that all of our employees and their families are safe uh, during this 
difficult time. Number two was to make sure that we were able to have business continuity uh, and this was in order to protect jobs um, and make sure that we had some continuity for when this whole thing is over. And number three is to start to build the plans to make sure that we're able to have some momentum uh, so that looking forward to the next six, eight, twelve months the business would be back in recovery and, and be able to contribute strongly to the Kenyan economy. So first of all, recently we donated $100,000 uh, to the Kenya Emergency Relief Fund for COVID-19. Outside of that, we've also been working closely with the farmers uh, in the four or five areas around Kenya where the farmers are focusing on, on tobacco growing. And we've done a whole program to reinstate some very run-down uh, water infrastructure so that the farmers in those areas and their families will be supplied with clean running water. And then lastly, our trade team have been delivering uh, WHO uh, detailed uh, information about how to stay safe uh, in the workspace to the retail network that we have around Kenya. So that's contacting somewhere in the range of 80,000 people around Kenya with information that was provided specifically by the WHO. We've been involved through uh, our Kentucky plant in the north of uh, America in the development, uh, early stage development of a vaccine uh, for coronavirus. The advantage that we have with this particular site is that we've been utilising the tobacco plant, which is a very fast growing plant and allows you to do all of the development work for vaccine uh, development very, very quickly. So um, we just uh, briefly released last week that we've just had the authorization to now go into the human uh, phase of the study. So this is taking it to the next level. This is a not-for-profit initiative uh, for the BAT group. So over the last couple of months, we were actually at the end of the growing season and we were bringing all of the leaf into the Theca plant. So we actually accelerated that whole process so that the farmers could get their leaf in as early as possible. Uh, so that they could get back into a safe working environment. It also meant that we were able to pay them early because we know that everybody was particularly cash strapped uh, at this time. And already my technical team are now back out in field talking to them about the new growing season, which starts in September. So that was really good, able to fast track the whole process around uh, the tobacco growing. Uh, bringing in the leaf and getting into the, th the green leaf thresher in Thika. Um, so there's an awful lot of work going on in the background to make sure that we've got very sound business contingency plans in place. And for us now, it's much more becoming sort of the new way of working. Uh, try not to think of it as totally being in, in crisis management. We now need to think about how we look forward so that we can just keep these processes as part of the normal way uh, of doing business. Wow, part of the normal way of doing business. That was Keep Kenya Moving, a video, and of course the lady speaking to us was Miss Beverly Spencer. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And of course another thank you to our sponsors, again without whom we would not be able to have achieved what we have, which is this event. So thank you to BAT Kenya, thank you to Safaricom, Women in Manufacturing, and the Kenya Association. Association of Manufacturers, excuse me. Now, next, we would obviously like you to continue engaging with us. I said it earlier, and I will not stop saying it until we get to number one. We have a few comments right here on our chat in Zoom, so allow me to take just a couple of seconds to read those. Evelyn Magaju says, I am inspired to challenge. I am looking for a mentor in manufacturing. I process pure peanut butter, but work as an internal auditor. My kind of girl. I 
I am convinced manufacturing is my path. So if anybody who's on the panel today or as our speakers want to address that, please feel free to respond to Evelyn Magadru on the chat uh, function. But well done for taking that bold step and asking for what it is that you need. Our hashtag is W-I-M-K-E. And we did ask you a couple of questions at the beginning, and we're still looking forward to your comments on what you think needs to be done to increase participation of women in the manufacturing sector. And we also asked you to share with us what your biggest challenge has been during this COVID-19 period. Now, next up, we have our He for She champion, our national chairman of the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, Mr. Moshai Kunyiha, who is also a learned friend, my senior. He's an advocate of the High Court of Kenya, just like me. I promise I was qualified. And of course, uh, he is truly our He for She champion in our conversation today. So Karibu Sana, Wana Chairman. Thank you very much, June, and great to see you all here. Um, June, my shirt is purple also. It's just light purple. You know, this is the re chairman. This is exactly why I started out with a definition of purple, because I could see yes. what had happened with your uh, wardrobe fashion choices this afternoon. But purple, yes. purple had a, a root in blue and red. So we'll forgive you for today. <laughs> I, was, I was close. I was close. All right. So thank you very much, and uh, I want to appreciate all the great women on this uh, show tonight or this um, event. Uh, so sad that we couldn't do it physically. Um, it would have been great to see you all. Uh, thanks, uh, Madam CS, Betty, uh, Flora, former chair, KEM, my predecessor in this role, and Sadia, of course and uh, Sander as well, who was here, as well as Phyllis and her team. We have Jedida as well. It's good to introduce Jedida, our new board member uh, from Bata, so, as well as the, the other board members we have um, on board. I think I saw Marianne, um, Shiro. Uh, Shiro is also not in purple, so I have an excuse. Uh, and a couple of others, yeah, and everybody else who's on it. So so great, and great to see all these women in manufacturing. So I'm here as a guest, I guess. This is this is a women thing, so again, just being the only guy, and thank you for the privilege of being the only man able to speak today. Um, and say from manufacturing perspective, or the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, we appreciate deeply the women who are here and the work that they're doing and the contribution that they do bring to manufacturing. Of course, although women in manufacturing as a part of CAM is new, women have been in manufacturing since the beginning. They have always been women doing some role within the manufacturing uh, sector. But as we know, um, and I think uh, Sandra mentioned those things, there's a lot of issues around the equality, the pay, the roles that they've been playing in there. But whatever we've built in manufacturing has not been done without women. So wherever we are, women have played a role. And I think it's important to also recognize the women at, uh, on the factory floor who are actually doing the work because they are also playing a key part in manufacturing. And we are trying to get more women you know, further up the management chain, the investment chain like Flora encouraged as well, so that they're actually not just managing the businesses, but also owning them. Women we know um, work hard. Uh, a real story in my neighborhood, we were a construction site, and I met the contractor recently, and I was telling him, I, I just noticed you've got a lot of women, you know, when I'm driving out in the evening, I'm like, or coming out in the morning, there is, there's a lot of women in the work, um, you know, waiting to, to get into the site. And he tells me, yeah, women are much better workers. He says they work much harder and you don't have to supervise them as much. So they get the, the job done. So we do a lot, uh, you know, with women. But sadly, and again, it highlights our, our theme of Choose to Challenge, is that most of them are actually doing just labor. They are not the fundi. So it will be on the fundi side, there are very few. I think on his site, he had two or three 
who are actual fundis who would call the skilled people in the um, in the construction site so we do still have a big challenge getting women skilled in those kind of roles and jobs like has been said by the other speakers so just two points i wanted to add to that and it's on that choose to challenge um emphasizing the need for that uh, mentorship and encouragement um you know the world as it is today is is not just the only way it could have been there's something called the contingent nature of history sometimes we look at the world today and we think it was always going to be like this it 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 wasn't the workplace as it is was created for men or by men and so they created it for themselves in a way that works for them so there is nothing as that stops us even as we get more women in the workplace and in places of leadership from changing the way the workplace um operates the way things are done men are driven more by say testosterone challenging each other and um, kind of wrestling around ideas but that's not necessarily the what inspires women or gets them going it's not that's a broad generalization but there is a difference slightly there um and it doesn't have to be like that always it can always be made so that uh women feel comfortable wherever they are and whatever in whatever roles they are they are playing we can change the culture around the organizations we can change the work practices and i think it's good we've been changing them in kenya around things like uh, maternity leave we now have requirements for um nursing stations in the offices and so on actually i think last year we had the first baby in parliament as well and why not we can do all these things so we can challenge um the way we've done things doesn't mean we have to keep doing them like that and finally just to encourage and i think you've heard about the uh the need for mentorship and then i want to encourage all the women here just mentor somebody and it doesn't matter where you are whether you're starting or or you're already big you've been doing it for years like bev and uh, you know jedida and all these other guys they are they are at the top but everyone should mentor each other because i think it kind of um works differently for women than for men this is my own observation from outside so my observation was my wife was um looking at a new role and uh i've kind of been encouraging her yeah hey, you know go do and talking through it as we talk through it etc and then uh, recently she went out you know some of her work colleagues called her and they they had a drink and a chat and told her you know she comes back she's very bubbly you know they told me i can do it um able to do it and i can have the skills if the gap has come people have identified me i can do it and then i was just like but that's what i've been telling you for the last two months i've been telling you exactly the same thing but obviously there's something that happens when she hears it from other women rather than just from her husband or probably other men and so there's an important role for women to encourage each other build each other up as we try and expand that space for women in the workplace so thank you for this opportunity and for and for challenging us i wrote down what you said because i found it extremely interesting you said the contingent nature of history and i think i'm going to do that research i think that was uh, directed at me your fellow learned friend so uh, i will do you proud senior i'll do you proud and i'll go and find out what that means but i got from it that we can reinvent and that we can carve out a new way of doing things uh, because maybe historically it was predominantly done by men but we are in a different space a different age so thank you for sharing and challenging us and supporting us as our he for she champion just another reminder that we did ask you if you are wearing the color purple or pink or the guys a shade of blue We do want you to take a photo of yourself, a selfie, and post it up using our hashtag. Um we do want to see if we want if, if somebody wins, we might award you something if you actually do so. And right now I can tell you that CS Betty Miner is probably going to win this award. She has gone on Twitter, taken an amazing cute selfie of herself with her mask and her earphones. She's in a car but she is tuned in and following our discussions and the outfit is a royal shade of purple. So if you want to win, 
you might want to challenge CS Betty Minor with your own selfie using our hashtag WIM. KE. I want to ask us one more trivia question. We've given out two gifts from our sponsor uh, for our hampers, for um, the people who answer our questions correctly. And I'd like to give out some Melvin's tea packages now. And so this is the question that we are asking next. Would you kindly tell us two female CEOs of multinational companies that you know? So their name and the company for which they serve as the CEO. Two female CEOs of multinational companies, any two. So engage with us on our Facebook Live platform, YouTube, Zoom, Twitter, and remember to use the hashtag WIMKE. If you've just joined us, where have you been? We've had such amazing speakers. We've been challenged. We've had personal stories shared, and we are rearing and geared up to go. So as you engage and answer those questions for the chance to win a Melvin's Tea hamper, I see you engaging, so keep doing that. But I'd like us to watch a video as we give you a few minutes to do your research and respond to our question. Two fem female CEOs of multinational companies, their names and the multinational companies they serve. <laughs> Once again, thank you to our sponsors, BAT Kenya, and of course, Safaricom PLC. Thank you so much to Kenya Association of Manufacturers and Women in Manufacturing for allowing us this forum, this platform to have this engagement, this conversation, and it is yielding fruit. Um, I'd like to read a question that was asked by Wanjiro Gidinji on our Zoom platform, and she says, how do I market my product? I make flowers and organic chili. Uh, flour like unga, and organic chilies. I'm thinking of moving out of Nairobi where I can actually grow most of the ingredients and control the organic content. However, I have a mental block having been out of employment for two years and I'm having many constraints. So I'd like to share that for the purposes of any of our speakers um, and any of our panelists who might still be online who may want to share um, just a few nuggets of wisdom um, and guidance that Wanjiro Givinji can benefit from. I also see some other comments in our chat that I'd like to read. Um, Duta says that she is working in manufacturing and mining and has been doing so until last year when she began manufacturing avocado oil. I would be honored to receive coaching and mentorship from any of these super women. So would I, my darling, so would I. Uh, I see that, I believe it's Sarah Alberg who says, hey all, I would also like to have the opportunity to share my mission. My name is Sarah Alberg, Alberg and I have a startup, Bona Factory is what it's called, in food manufacturing, challenging the food industry to be all plant-based. And those are the innovations that she has currently at her food uh, manufacturing factory. She's looking for mentors, connections, establishing an advisory board for Bona. Cheers. And she's left us her email address if anybody would like to engage. So the answers to the question I asked for the chance to win a Melvin's hamper. Let's see. If first of all we listened to Auntie June's questions, 
And if we responded to them correctly. So I asked if you could name us two female CEOs of multinational companies and list also their name and the name of the company. So I see answers like Jane Karuku, EABL, and Beverly O, BAT Kenya. I see Marion Mwangi of BOC Gases, but Betty uh, only gave us one answer unless there's another one in a different, oh, there it is. Betty Miner also gave us Jane Karuku, but Betty. Betty, I, I don't know if we can, my, my good friend Betty, I'll buy you another cup of tea, but the camper I'm going to give to somebody else. I also see somebody by the name of E. Um, I'm not so sure where the rest of your answer is. Safra Katz, I think is what you were, yes, Safra Katz of Oracle. Uh, Rita Kavashe of Isuzu. Interesting ones. Indra Nui of Pepsi. Uh, Jadida Thotho, Batashu, PLC, yes. Um, all right. Beverly Spencer again. And Marion Gadogamwangi. Carol Kowech, Schneider Electric. Nancy Muhoya, Ernst & Young. Rebecca Miano, Kenjen. I could just read all of these names because it's amazing. Look how many amazing women are heading such great organizations. Sola or Shola David, CEO of Africa Standard Bank Group, Nigeria. Irene Chamley, I believe, CEO of Smile Telecoms, South Africa. So all of you have actually educated me. I didn't know some of these amazing women, but we will select a winner. Which one are we going to select? How many can we, can we select? Ten. We can select ten. <gasps> ten. I feel like Mama Christmas. Okay, let's go. I'm going to read out the name. So let's start with the first one I read who gave us two. I believe, well, okay, well, it was Winnie Gumi, yes, who gave us Nancy Matimo of Multichoice and Jedida Toto. Well done, Winnie. All right, let's go. E. E also gave us whoever E is. Lucky, we'd like to see both your names so we can connect and network with more than just one letter. Joanne Achieng, you gave us Isuzu Rita Kavashe, but I don't see a second one, so let me start with the ones who gave us two. Jane Achieng, there we go. Jane Achieng gave us two, so well done. You are our second winner. I also see, I'm, I'm not sure what name, Maureen, is that Maureen? All right, Maureen, you are also our, our winner, our third winner for this afternoon. Simon Mutua, I feel like we should just give you something because you are he for she. All the ladies who have been answering, even the guys are following us. So Simon Mutua, you are going to be one of our winners today. I also want to award, do we have anybody else? Scroll up. Okay, we've given Jane a Cheng. All right, I think let's give, sorry? Oh, I see, okay. <laughs> All right, let's give Josephine Mutai. Josephine Mutai will also award you one of our wonderful hampers because you did actually answer correctly. You gave us Jedida Thoto of Bata Shoe Company, uh, PLC, Kenya, and you also gave us uh, Rita uh, Kavashi, no, sorry, Carol Koech of Schneider Electric, so well done. Um, all right, I'll pick one more and then we'll move to our next. Celestine. Can we, can we stop at Celestine? Did you see Celestine? Lina Gizuka, Kenya Wine Agency. All right. And Simon Mutua, I see your second answer. So those are our first winners who will be getting our Melvin hampers. So thank you so much to Melvin's uh, for blessing us with such amazing things, with sometimes the weather uh, go, doing what it's doing, with the rain coming and doing what it's doing, a wonderful cup of tea and other goodies in that hamper are exactly what we need. 
So thank you for joining us once again. You are tuned in to the annual event for the Women in Manufacturing, which would have been a dinner. And we've been having an amazing evening. We've been challenged. We've been inspired. We've been uh, in educated. And we've been informed. And we've had some amazing speakers throughout the evening. And we are now at the point uh, where we would like to jump into an engaging panel discussion. And we want to thank you especially for logging in and tuning in because without you all us amazing women will just be speaking to ourselves so thank you for your engagement out there Helen Bosire I see you great inspiration Jack Shafton Mauti says this kind of event my prayer is that it gets out to reach all our girls and our young ladies mostly inspiring space for them to be to see to hear and to get encouraged now and in the future. I feel that requires an amen. Elvis Mvoy, it is about time that we say to women that it is possible to succeed in manufacturing. I agree with you 100%. And of course, Edith Osoro had answered some of the questions earlier. We're going to give Jack Shafton Mauti um, a hamper as well because he did give us two uh, Nassim Devji, uh, Diamond Trust Bank, and the others have already been mentioned. So thank you once again. Continue to use our hashtag WIMKE across all the platforms, Facebook Live, YouTube, Zoom, and of course on Twitter. I hope you're doing well. I promise to sing, and this is specifically for the panelists. So I'm going to do a little ditty, a little bit of a song that I wrote so that we don't have copyright issues. And this is for all of you. It's called Good Day. I'm sitting here thinking about the things that happened to me yesterday. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm done wasting time. And I've made up my mind to leave crazy behind and move on. So I I'm stepping out into the bright sunshine, not a gray cloud in the sky. It's a new day, and it's a good day. So just put on your happy face, yesterday's gone away. It's a new day, and it's a good day. So that's my <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, where are my applauses? Excuse me. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so go out and find my album. It's called 20 Years because we are marketing ourselves. It was manufactured by somebody locally, hopefully a woman. But thank you. Uh, music is very dear and near to my heart, as is the conversation that we are about to go into with these amazing panelists today. So allow me to quickly introduce them, even as we ask you to continue to engage with us, uh, ladies and gentlemen, who are tuned in across the various platforms. So today I have the honor and the privilege of speaking to some amazing women, first of whom is Mary Ann Musangi. Now, Mary Ann Musangi is a highly experienced general manager. She's demonstrated the ability to lead diverse teams of professionals over the span of her career, which is across advertising, pharmaceuticals, the banking industry, hospitality, and FMCG fast-moving consumer goods industries. She has more than 25 years of hands-on experience in strategic planning and in business development. She has proven time and time again that she has an ability to successfully analyze an organization's critical business requirements and identify deficiencies and, most importantly, their potential opportunities. She has worked for various years with multinationals um, across the board and sits on the board rather of Sidian Bank, UAP, Investments Limited, International House Limited, Woof Advertising and Marketing, Croydon Limited, and Sheraton Rongai, just to name a few. And currently, she is the Managing Director of HACO uh, Industries. So welcome very much, Mus Marianne Musangi. Our next panelist is Jedida Thotho. She is the Managing Director, Batashu Kenya PLC. 
an alumnus of the St. Mary's University in the US of A, and she has over 20 years leadership experience, both abroad and locally. She has worked with a multinational and one of the Fortune 100 companies in the US, and of course, Deacons. She is keen on seeing collaborative and inclusive decision-making in business and wants to integrate wellness and health in leadership. Jadida Toto. Our next panelist is Shiro Waweru Waidaka. She is the co-founder of Fun Kids and the CEO as well of Fun Homes and currently serving as the Kenya Association of Manufacturers SME Hub Chair. She's an interior architecture graduate from the University of Glasgow and is a self-confessed serial entrepreneur. She successfully founded and ran an interior architecture consultancy called Amber Africa for 10 years. And then she launched Fun Kids, a children's brand that designs and manufactures products targeting children up to the age of 16. In 2016, Shiro received an award from Goldman Sachs for her work in Kids Go Tech. In 2017, Wanjiro and her company received a global award, the Women for Tech Award, from the GSMA in Barcelona. And as if that was not enough, in 2019, Fun Kids received an award from the Government of Kenya's Ministry of Environment. And she has recently, in this times, also launched Fun Homes, and she'll be speaking to us a little bit about that when we jump in to our panel. And our final panelist, final uh, last Last but certainly not least, is Amina Haider. She is the founder of Tam Tam Diani Limited, a manufacturing company dealing in natural oils for health and beauty benefits. Also a serial entrepreneur herself, she has been recognized uh, over and over again for being able to identify challenges that are typically faced by women entrepreneurs while they set up their businesses. And as a result of that, it inspired her to set up Above the Radar, or ATR, an association of Kenyan women entrepreneurs in manufacturing to grow their businesses and to make sure they attain their full potential. I can't tell you what an honor and privilege it is to be able to have a conversation with these amazing superwomen. Hello, ladies, and welcome. I'll ask all of you just to unmute yourselves because this is going to be more of a conversation. Um, and basically, we want to spend the next few minutes. So just let everybody hear your voice. Say a quick hello. Shiro? Hey, how are you? I'm very well. Marianne, how are you? I'm good, but as luck would have it, my power is gone, and I'm praying my generator holds up. <laughs> it, it is coming in Jesus' name. The generator will hold up. These are things women in manufacturing should be able to solve. Call a woman to solve that problem for you. It'll be well, Marianne. We'll probably start with you so that you don't have a, an issue and we don't lose you and the amazing things you want to share. Hello, Jadida. Hi, June. Good evening. How are you? Very well. Very well. It's good to see you and put a face to the, the wonderful good to things. See you as well. All right. And of course, Amina. Hi there. How are you? Hi, June. How are you? Very well. Amina, are you in Nairobi or are you in Pwani? No, 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 I'm in Nairobi. You're in Nairobi, okay. I love the art behind you as, you, as well as Shiro. Both of you, I, I love that that is a beautiful background. Um, the others have purple uh, and, and one of these virtual backgrounds, but you all look amazing, and thank you, thank you for being here and taking the time to have this very important conversation. So we'll kick off uh, with Marianne. We want to inspire and give hope amid the COVID-19 pandemic. We've seen how it has affected Affected not just the women but everybody in business and our entire livelihoods have been uh, threatened and our very very lives um, from a health perspective but we re realize and we recognize that we must also give hope because it's a very very difficult time and what I love about all of you is that you have found a way to create opportunities to pivot 
in one way or another. And so without much further ado, Mary Ann, in your current role as the managing director of Hako Industries, you have chosen to challenge all, almost all of your life as we have seen. You began in corporate and then you rose quite fast. So I'd like you maybe to just share a little bit of that experience transitioning from that corporate setup into your family business and how that happened for you at a time when we all were thrown into this pandemic. Mary Ann. All right, thank you very much, uh, June, and uh, good evening to everybody. Um, I loved what Connie Anika said about women having to be there for others to lift them up. Uh, I recall in my employment days when I worked for Coca-Cola, there were two ladies in particular, Carol Wainaina and Susan Givoku, who pulled me up and gave me challenging opportunities for me to grow. I went off to uh, Morocco at the age of 27 to do uh, new product development for 27 markets across Africa. I was alone, I wasn't married, I didn't have kids. That was a challenge in itself, living in a North African country um, and, and standing up and being a boss and leading these markets and telling them what to do. So these challenges, we have to face them Yes, there is fear, but we have to conquer the fear because it's what makes us grow. Um, I moved into family business because it was the right time. Uh, the family business was going through a lot of change. We were going through a divorce uh, with a South African company called Tiger Brands. And at the same time, we were also divorcing from BIC. BIC was 70% of our, our revenues as a business. Um, and our stakeholders looked at Hako and said, well, without big, what are you? Uh, we had to, therefore give confidence to our stakeholders, to our partners, to our financiers. And the only way we could do that was by somebody from the family going into the business and leading the business. Because that meant we had to do it. Um, moving on to COVID, COVID was, uh, was a challenging one. And I think for me, because I was already in a state of heightened awareness, trying to grow this business literally from nothing because we had just lost big, which was uh, ultimately you know, our bread and butter. Uh, we, I, I looked at what was happening in Italy and in China and I knew who are our biggest tourists? Italians. Who are the people doing all the construction in Kenya today and in East Africa? It's the Chinese. Love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And so, so relevant in this time, how when you sit with your executive team and say, how can we be relevant to exactly what's happening in our midst, in our country, in the world right now, and being able to quickly turn that around and be on the shelves in April, just a month after, is extremely impressive. Thank you for sharing that. I want to move now to uh, Shiro. Uh, founder of Fun Kids and recently Fun Homes. Congratulations uh, on this new baby in your entrepreneurial journey. Um, I have had the privilege of visiting your experiential experience home in, uh, in Lavington. And um, so I want you to maybe tell us a little bit about the, the growth trajectory that we've seen. Um, you have been consistent in sharing posts on social media and creating new products. I see Sanda posting that she has your products on her couch in New York. I mean, during this pandemic, you've been exporting products. Please tell us how that happened. Uh, uh, thanks, Junie, um, and good evening, everybody. Uh, what a fantastic day to be doing this. Um, I love at the beginning when Flora said it's a challenge, we canceled last year, but we're still going to forge ahead. Mushai, thank you for not only being a she for he, but actually um, walking the talk. We appreciate you for it. Um, and to all the amazing women who manufacture in various ways. And it's, I keep saying every day, it's not easy. It's, um, it's easier said than done. Um, the mentorship, the sponsorship is all so, so needed. So during the pandemic, um, I decided, look, I don't know. I don't know what this is. I've never lived through a pandemic. And honestly, I don't know anybody who has. And everybody's saying, oh, you need to pivot. I'm like, yeah, but I also just want to panic, right? Um, so I literally just 
just decided, you know what, I'm going to be me the way I know how and just say packs and just, just freeze. Because as a leader, it's also important to be honest. And that's one thing I've learned in business. As a, as a person steering the ship, just tell people, look, there's an iceberg ahead and we don't know what to do, but we will do something and we'll be okay. And I find the honesty and I told the customers the same. And I said, look, we're going to shut down, but we'll be back. We don't know in what shape or form. As entrepreneurs, we'll shape shift, but we'll be back. But allow me just to take time out. I've been an, an entrepreneur ever since. I've never had a job. So maybe this was also the first time I had to stop. And there was no business plan that prepared me for this. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to stop and be still. Sometimes it's too much going on in our heads. Uh, we just come out of looking for alternatives to timber sector. We'd come through so much. And I just said, you know what? I'm going to collapse if I carry on like this. And we just stopped. And then listened to people saying how they're at home. A lot of people who have traveled and have not been home in a long, long time suddenly don't like the look of their homes, suddenly don't have a tray to put their tea on, suddenly don't have a cushion for their back, uh, you know. And I thought, huh, I may not be in essential services. My machines can't change to start making masks. But the same machines that used to make children's furniture can make amazing trays and make amazing tables. Uh, we were not liquid. And I said, but we, what we had as our resource was a lot of waste on the floor. So we reopened the factory after three months. I also told my team to go home and regroup with their families because who knew? We saw the numbers in other parts of the world. And I said, you know what? As a business leader, let me just take my, tell my people to go home. Just be with your people. We'll come back, right? And we put them on, on, um, on leave, on paid leave, actually as a small business. And I said, we'll figure this out. And literally three months after closing the doors, we opened by making trays, basic tray, tray. After that, we moved into other products for home and I realized the huge, huge gap. Um, people wanted to feel better about working from home. It was not easy. I needed my machines to keep running. I have, you know, loans and everything to pay. And literally that's how we pivoted into fun Homes, but I wanted it to be fun product. I didn't want you to be working from home on a regular desk you have at work. That's not who we are. We wanted it to be, there was so much sorrow, so much fear and everything. We needed something that's more playful, but practical. And literally that's how we pivoted into fun homes. And less than a year later, we opened our first um, store in Lavington. Well done, well done. I love what you said. You said panic. Your first reaction was, I want to panic. And then you remember yeah. that you are a leader in your own right. And then you said, let me pax. For, uh, depending yeah. on how old we are on this forum, we'll know what pax means. It yeah. means just yeah. chill, take a moment, breathe, exhale, inhale. And after that, you pivoted. So those are Shiro's three Ps. And if you, if you didn't know, you can uh, register the copyright and the trademark in those. Panic to pax to pivot. Um, I think it's such an amazing story, and I think it's, it's so simple. The solution was in something so simple. We found ourselves at home. It's true, a lot of us never spent this amount of time in our homes, and we probably didn't like what it looked like. So being able to add some juge, some wonderful um, uh, color and, and expression, and I know that a lot of your, your um, inspirational uh, drive or force comes from Africa, and it shows in the, in the products that you are uh, placing in our homes and are available at your shop. So thank you for, for showing us how you pivoted, even though we all were human and we all panicked when this hit us. Jadida, I'd like to come to you now. You are the first female, first female MD of a shoe company. And I'm wondering, why did this take so long? We Women are lovers of shoes. In fact, every time I go to buy shoes, I walk in the store and I say that the shoes whisper to me. They say, June, take me home. And so for me, that this is when this has happened, and I oblige, I oblige, I go, I say, I'm going to buy one pair, and I inevitably walk away with more than one. And I am a faithful customer at, at Bata as well. So tell us what that has been like for you, being the very first female and the very first local CEO of the Bata Shoe Company here in Kenya. And also, what was your journey getting there, Jadida? Thank you, thank you so much, June. Allow me, first of all, to acknowledge, you know, the presence of the KEM chairman, the former uh, chairman of KEM as well. Uh, we have the CS, Betty Miner, who's a big advocate for, you know, our business. 
uh, my fellow panelists, uh, the speakers who spoke before us, a lot of people, you know, who've logged in from home and, um, you know, have taken time out to really listen to us. I really acknowledge all of you and uh, good evening to all of you. So just to paint the picture of what it's been like for me, um, I've only been in Butter for two years. So last year in January, I was the commercial director for, you know, Butter Kenya. And in February, February 1st, to be exact, I was promoted to be the country manager. And then a week, a year ago, last week, you know, COVID happened. So I was in my role exactly for about four weeks. So I was barely, um, you know, getting to understand what my role was in the organization and uh, the expectations of me, yeah, you know, within the role. And um, COVID happened. And I think I was looking up to a leader to lead me in terms of what I needed to do. So nonetheless, oops, June, can you hear me? Yes, we can still hear you. OK, Good. excellent. Okay. So I was hoping there would be a leader that would lead me through this. And I realized everybody was looking up to me, the exco, everybody reporting to me was looking up to me for my leadership. And the minute I, I realized that we really had a crisis where our business was doing 20% of the year before, January was fantastic. Kids had just gone back to school. Our business was rocking. February, when I picked it up, business was rocking. And then last week, last uh, a year ago, last week, the business plummeted to 20% of the year before. And uh, that was a total shock for me because, uh, you know, that's a big piece of our business, you know, going forward. And so my first reaction, I really thrive uh, in crisis, was to really form what I called, and it still is the butter war committee. And the war committee was to be able to fight because we realized we cannot sustain a business if we continued as such. At the time, COVID was not known. We didn't know what the long-term impact is, but I like to be pragmatic in terms of being able to focus what is going to happen three months from now, four months, and a year down the road. And I know our Butter War Committee members have plugged in. So all of them had roles. So we had factory managers, we had sales managers, we had uh, HR who was critical, we had our finance teams, the leaders being part of the committee. And literally we met on a daily basis and we set up key priorities. And the first was the health and wellness of our staff here. We have 3,000 employees across our chain here in Kenya, most of whom are factory workers. The rest are in 150 stores that we have countrywide. So what was so important for us, knowing this disease as we knew it at the time was the health and wellness. So we had the WHO mandated that people needed to wash their hands, put on masks and social distancing. And we thought to ourselves, my goodness, we have a full factory here, but there's possibly no way they're gonna go into the restrooms and start washing their hands from that facility. On top of that, these are blue collar workers. At the time, masks were not available. And if you got a mask, it was 200 shillings. We knew what their labor wages were. So immediately we got into action. We normally have a lot of chemical drums within our facility. We cut them into half. We poured water into them. We bought taps right here in the Muru. And uh, we started to also manufacture uh, detergent. We have a lot of chemists here. So we have some brilliant minds. There's nothing that they can't do. And I told them, there's no way we're gonna start buying commercial soap, right? You all know how much soap is. So what are we gonna do? Guys, go get the formulation from Kebs on how we're gonna make, we're gonna make soap for washing our hands. And on top of that, there's a sanitizer element, but we realized washing hands was much more important than sanitizing, especially in the context of the work that we do with our hands. So anyway, the team, uh, sure enough, were able to deploy the, the, the hand washing facilities across our entire factory. And then we were able also to get the formulation for making the hand sanitizers. Obviously we did have cabs at the time to really approve, but we said, you know what? We're gonna roll out this. It seems like the right thing to do. On top of that, the demand plummeted immediately from a factory perspective. So immediately the schools were supposed to resume in April. They could not resume. So we could not do a back to school business in terms of our tannery, our leather factory, all of the other uh, factories that we have here. We have about five factories. So then we decided, okay guys, we're gonna try and sustain this as much as we can. And because we don't have masks, we're gonna turn our canvas factory. Canvas factory is the one that makes the into a mask making facility. 
and our factory managers are going to figure out how to make a mask. So literally, they went online and tried to now, you know, make what we now see out there in the road using, you know, repurposed fabric that we had in order to keep our team safe. So that was the number one priority. And, and, and also, you know, within our stores. The other one was communication, to really ensure that we communicated to our different stakeholders, between the customers who were coming into our stores, our team members here, to ensure that they understood this new illness. So we launched a lot of communication around what we knew at the time to be COVID, in terms of what are the symptoms, what are you supposed to do, what are you not supposed to do. Along those lines, a week or two after the pandemic, my HR manager comes to me and tells me, oh, Jadida, by the way, we have our first case of COVID. And I froze. This was the time when COVID was really stigmatized, you know, and it was a young girl in one of our stores. And uh, sure enough, we held her, I was her mother. We held her hand and we walked her through the journey. And she became an advocate actually from COVID, incognito behind the scenes, because she was one of the uh, top uh, or the first 20 cases that we had. And then we understood that we needed to fumigate our stores. I had no idea what fumigation was. I know JIC, Detto, and everything else, but I realized it's much more complex than that. Mm. So we had to buy all of that machinery to, you know, to get things done. So nonetheless, that was from a health and safety perspective. Mm. The other things that were important for us were around, you know, the commercial element and the viability of the business. So our work committee set up real priorities for the rest of the year around, we needed to right-size the business. Yes. There were some stores before COVID that were not making money, but we realized that with COVID, there's no way they were gonna survive. And one thing that was clear to us, the sustainability of the business is not about a negative p &L. It's about liquid cash. And mm. if we didn't have liquid cash to meet our obligations in terms of paying our rent, yes. paying our people, yes. paying our suppliers, there was no way we were going to survive. So for us, our key principle along the way was cash is king. And yes. uh, based on that particular strategy, our key things were going back to our landlords and saying, look here, it's two, three months down the road mm -hmm. in terms of COVID. Our sales have gone down by 40, 50%. We are unable to meet our obligations. We have a lease agreement with you, but unfortunately we'll not be able to meet our lease obligation. Yes. And so we converted a lot of those leases from fixed rentals to, we're gonna pay you a base, but then the rest is gonna be based on turnover. Okay. When things get better, we will ride together. All if right. things remain, as please bear with us. Thank you. So I, those are the things that Jadida, you've, you've shared such a, a, a wealth of knowledge. I love how you're taking us through the actual steps because I think a lot of people who are participating in this conversation mm -hmm. and listening can actually relate. I mean, in a personal capacity, we had to talk to our landlords. It was no different for your organization. Communication is key because the stigma, you're right, around this pandemic was huge. People were like, we don't know what this is. If you have it, we can't engage. But being able to see the human face as well of, uh, of an organization that has as many as 3,000 employees, if I caught your, your, your figure correctly. Mm -hmm. um, but what mm -hmm. I love uh, about what you said is the thriving in crisis, because you've also shared how you, you, you saw what your plan was. Uh, schools were supposed to resume, so school shoes uh, that kids are supposed to buy, that completely disappears as a business. Uh, but you found ways to thrive in that crisis, and I love that you leveraged your team's uh, strengths as well and setting up this war committee i think everybody needs a war committee everybody needs one in their life and in their profession i'll come back to you because i would like to ask you about um what innovative steps you took in in terms of how you changed your thinking um and, and maybe share a few more examples but uh for now i'd like to just jump over to amina Hyder. um amina hello are you still with us is amina still with us Yes, there you are. Hi, Amina, if you would unmute. So um, it's, it, you are one of the, the few people who, when I speak, I spoke to you for the first time this week. And it's, I feel like I've known you my whole life, number one. Um, and I think that's an amazing quality. And it's no surprise to me that even in your entrepreneurial journey at Tam Tam Diani, you saw something and you realize that you had the capacity and the network and the window to do something about it. And if I remember what you shared, you have a hundred women who are members of Above the Radar. 
Would you maybe just walk us through what was your motivation um, in starting that organization and even the name, what was the inspiration behind it? Because it was inspired by some of the challenges um, that you had. And I think because it's important for people to know what we are speaking about, I want to play uh, the video um, so that they can also see some of the things that above the radar does. So, ladies and gentlemen, would you just watch this video and then Amina will share, will share with us. Now, all of these amazing products would have been present. We'd have been able to see and touch them and feel them and test them had we been in a non-COVID space. So, Amina, would you let us know a little bit about what motivated you to start? And if you would be able to give us key factors that you think women need in order to be able to scale their business. Amina. Thanks, June. Um, like Marianne, I might be having a little bit of problem with the uh, network, and I think my lights are sort of dimming. I hope you're able to see me clearly. <laughs> yes, we can. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'll start the story of ATR and uh, how it began first, um, and uh, the meaning of the name ATR. So ATR stands for Above the Radar. Uh, it was on the 29th uh, of, um, of uh, December, uh, 2019, when I participated in an exhibition. Um, and I was able to meet uh, a lot of women who are also uh, participating in this exhibition. I took time to walk around and, and ask them a question regarding their product. I was very amazed at the quality of products that they were manufacturing. But their main problem was that um, the regulations, the certifications were the challenge. So with that having said, um, they were operating uh, below the radar, which most of us call it chini uh, amaji, um, so to speak. Yeah? So under the water, right? And I used to do that too. I mean, I operated under the radar for quite a while. And then finally, I got some guts uh, to be able to face all the other challenges uh, that um, you know it takes for you to get certified and so on. So I went back home. Um, and about 1 o'clock in the night, I um, got up and I decided to actually do my first um, Facebook page. Never done it before, first time. So it took me close to about three hours. That's how good I was. So then um, what happened was um, in the midst of it, you know, the kids were sleeping. I was tempted to actually wake them up and say, come, come and help me do this thing. But around four o'clock in the morning, I was able to accomplish that. And in the morning, I then uh, invited, um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear can you. you. Hear me? We can hear ah, you. Okay. Yes. Okay. I was watching your face. <laughs> so um, then I, um, um, I, in the morning, I then sent invitations to a lot of the women that I had met. And in three weeks, we had uh, 250 members countrywide uh, coming from different uh, counties. I then realized that um, within that number of, 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 of members, I, I didn't quite really understand all of them because you know, there, were, there were a bit too many. Um, but we started the journey of trying to understand the regulations and uh, I started putting up information, uh, listening to some of their challenges that they had and share as much as I could from my past experience uh, of, of trying to follow the, the, the do's and don'ts. So then um, I set up a WhatsApp group of, um, which was now easier because I was now dealing with the women within Nairobi and the, and the, and the, outskirts of Nairobi. Um, the, WhatsApp group, uh, the WhatsApp group actually grew, up, grew to 100 
plus women. It's a very active uh, group. We tend to share ideas. It's a support system. We help each other. Um, at the same time, we started learning uh, on issues regarding certification and how best can we uh, solve these, these problems, right? So um, right now, we have quite a number of our members who are certified, who have actually uh, uh, registered their companies, as you've seen the products in the, uh, in the video that we've given you. Those are amazing products. They're such high quality products that are coming from these women. And I, I know quite a number of them are online and they're probably listening to me. Um, I'm very, very proud of each and every one of you. I know sometimes I can be quite hard <laughs> and pushy, uh, but um, we've come a long way since uh, 2019. Uh, we, we've managed to survive 2020 yes. and we're here at 2021. Great. Amina, thank you, thank you. I think it's so important that you've highlighted the the infrastructure around how we do our businesses. You know, you mentioned the Facebook page and it took you three hours to set it up, but this is how we are operating now. For a lot of businesses, social media has become our marketing uh, uh, platform. It's become the way in which we can save our co COVID coins, is what they're called, and use um, a little bit less money to be able to market the business. And I think encourage and pulling these women with you. Marianne said it earlier, she listed two women who pulled her up as they went along, and I think you've done something very similar as well with the women who are part of Above the Radar uh, Association. Now, um, for those of you who are tuned in, we are having a panel discussion with four amazing women. If you do want to ask them any questions or uh, any comments, I would love to have you share those so that we can have it as part of our discussion and save time, because we do have uh, an award recognition uh, ceremony that we also want to, to make sure that you do not miss as we recognize some champions uh, across the board in women in manufacturing. Now, ladies, all of you have shared something that I think is key in this discussion of providing hope and giving hope in such dire times. The ability to leverage your creativity, your team, your network, and even the few coins that you may have to be able to turn things around or to pivot. And so, Marianne, I'd like to come back to you because somebody asked a question if we could just have that up so that I can share that with you. Elizabeth Alich wants to ask about your consistency. She says, I've noted your consistency, and she'd like you to address how you manage that specifically, because you've been in so many different uh, spaces and industries. Your, your specific aspect of consistency, if you could address that, even as you probably tie that up with um, the ability to, to uh, I guess, navigate the different businesses that you're in. You've shared a little bit about HACO but, and, and what happened within the context of the pandemic. But if you could address the consistency when you address the future of your business as well and what are the things you've learned in the last 12 months that you will have to consistently um, uh, apply to the future. Marianne. Thank you. Uh, thanks for that question. I was looking at it and I, I was wondering what was meant by the term consistency. So I hope I do justice in my response to it. Um, I think uh, consistency is really about who you are, your values. Um, I am somebody who, if I say I'm gonna do something, I ensure I deliver, I will deliver. If I am unable to deliver, I will come back and say, I cannot deliver accordingly. Um, quality in everything I do. So I do everything to my best capability. Um, so maybe that is what has enabled this consistency. And thank you very much. It's, it's the, I don't know if I'd ever looked at it like that. Um, I, I believe in achieving and doing more every time, learning from my experiences because it's, it's, it's about that. But if I do something for too long, um, I get bored. And if I get bored, I, I will not focus on what I'm doing and I will not deliver the quality that is required to that job. Uh, with regards to, to HACO Industries and June, maybe to your question when you're talking about what do I see for the future, uh, we're still in the COVID era. And um, 
a nugget of hope that I'd like to leave our, our listeners and our viewers with is, is we're all in the same boat. Don't sit there and think that you're alone. You're not alone. Um, one of my, I had a company before I became managing director of Hako Industries, which was um, in the hospitality arena. I had three restaurants and a catering line. Um, I had amazing clients as, uh, in my catering line, like Anjawala and Kana. I used to feed them every day, something I'm extremely proud of. Organizations like Cellulant, organizations like CRA, um, Commissioner of Revenue Authority. Uh, it was a business that was doing well. Um, and COVID happened. And I literally overnight had to let go of 50 employees. There was nothing more painful to me than doing that and having to go through that. And when I turned around, because I was managing director of Hako Industries at the time, it's 2020, um, I said to myself, I'm not gonna let the same thing happen to, to me in Hako. I have 400 employees in Hako. I cannot lose any more staff. I cannot send people home without knowing how they're gonna feed their children. Um, so know that we're in the same boat, pay critical attention to what is happening globally. Um, spend time on CNN, spend time on BBC, spend time um, listening to what's happening uh, in Africa across our continent, uh, what's happening at the Suez Canal right now, because it will affect a lot of us. We're all shipping in things, but if the ships can't get through the Suez Canal, um, you know, a lot of our deliveries are gonna be very late. Uh, so, be alert on what's happening on a global scale. Uh, the, the third thing is to act with speed. When you identify something, identify a route. I believe in acting quickly because the opportunity is there and you have to take, you, you have to own it before other people do come in and own it. When you look at the sanitizer business today, a lot of people said, Hako Industries, you're making sanitizers. You must be making a lot of money. Actually, we weren't. We were extremely lucky to just simply break even. I was able to pay my staff. And as Tejita said, you know, it's the cash flow. How much cash do you have yeah. coming into the business to pay your debts? Mm. Uh, so act with speed uh, and then remain focused on what, what needs to be done. And okay. then we're all here to support yes. network, network, network. I, I always say this, and Cam should use me as a, an advertising billboard. <laughs> I called Cam because, through COVID. I called Phyllis, Phyllis at 10 o'clock at night, asking her, how can my trucks continue moving across the country? And Wonderful. she held my hand through the COVID process. And I will talk on behalf of Cam because it's an organization that will support us as manufacturers, will guide us, will talk on our behalf to government in mm. terms of what we need and what we require. So Thank I you. hope that somehow answers the question. I, I definitely <laughs> I definitely think it does. And I think, um, thank you for breaking it down so simply um, and numbering them. And, and the nugget of hope that we're not alone in all of this, I think, is, is, is a big take home, I think, even for me. Um, I want to just uh, segue into uh, Jadida. There's a few um, uh, questions and comments on the chat. So ladies, as we engage, please look at the, the chat. We may not be able to get to all the questions or all the comments. Comments. Amina, there are some for you. People are asking how they can join your WhatsApp group and they want to be your friend and they want to be mentored. I see moms in business also wanting to join the Above the Radar group. So please address uh, those concerns or those requests. And Jadida, maybe as you um, talk to us a little bit um, about how you had to think in a different innovative way um, as you thought about your business, I see a, a comment or a question here from Duta Jen who says, could you also uh, tie in with that the best way to position a brand for the global market? If you could address those two, uh, that would be great. And continue engaging us. If you have uh, questions also on the other platforms or comments mostly, uh, please do use the hashtag WIMKE. Jadida. All right, thank you, June, for that question. So basically during that time, we had to scrap all the policies we had in place 
really remained flexible and adaptable to our business model and really forgot about everything that we ever did, how we did it, the policies and everything else. So I'll give you a few uh, pointers on some of the things that we did from a product development perspective, because the factory was so idle, we had to challenge our product development teams to try and be innovative because now the factory is kind of empty. So can we play around with the patapatas, for example? So you'll see in our stores now, outside of your traditional blue and red sleeper that you went to school with, you know, 30, 40 years ago, we now have different colors. We have beautiful colors because the team started to engage on new product developments. When you look at our canvas and Angoma, we now have fantastic product lines that are on the way. They'll be in stores in a few months, but all that work started during that time. Uh, the gumboots, we started to play around with colors, with different molds. Uh, the school shoes, we came up with a different line around, uh, um, you know, as opposed to leather, can you have a PU shoe that is not leather? Because more than likely, the propensity for customers to purchase, um, you know, shoes will, will decrease. In addition to that, we realized that there was a trend. When people were working from home, they were no longer wearing dress shoes and some of the casual shoes that we used to sell. Mm -hmm. And they were all wearing uh, shoes that you stay with around the house. So it was very casual shoes. And those, those are low price point items. So we realized we had to cancel all of our orders that were coming through and all of our production plans for any men's dress, ladies dress, because the hope of guys going back to work is, was not gonna be there, but we needed to focus on the casual element. And we got into sneaker business and we realized, my goodness, this is a fun space to play around with. People could actually go to work when they do with sneakers or in their everyday life from a lifestyle perspective, they could be wearing sneakers. On top of that, there's become a health craze around, you know, people wanting to be healthy. So we really invested a lot in our in our product development around the sneakers. Okay. In addition to that, in terms of our whole supply chain, we start, realized that we no longer needed to rely on the lead times that we were working with. It was, we produce when we have a farm order. We don't have a farm order, we can't produce. So okay. that's how we were able to reduce some of our inventories. We've talked about real estate in terms of uh, the rental negotiations that yes. we had to do. On the same front, from a finance perspective, we went through a lot of heavy promotional strategies in the stores to liquidate what we had. So that was in an effort to increase our cash flow. And I'm happy to say that in the history of this organization for over 10 years, we have significant cash flow prior to COVID wow. and we have sustainability wow. for a very long time because of those strategies where you really looked at your wallet has been very tight and mm. you were only spending what was necessary. Okay. In addition to that, and the last point has to do with giving back to society. We realized we had a role to play in COVID. So how, how are we going to do that? For us, it was donations. And yesterday I'm pleased to announce that as a global organization, uh, in terms of our head office in Switzerland, including Kenya and all the operating companies, we've been able to donate a million pairs of shoes wow. to our healthcare wow. workers, their families, and um, volunteers during this period in time. So that's, I think, how we really looked at the business in terms of doing things differently. Wonderful. Thank you. That, and well done. That's, a, that's not a small number. Um, and thank you for uh, supporting our frontline uh, workers and warriors uh, during this pandemic. Shira, I want to jump over to you uh, very, very quickly. I'm told that we are running out of time. So ladies, I, I, I could talk to you forever clearly, uh, but I will encourage us that if there are questions and comments, please do feel free to just jump in there and respond to them so that uh, those ladies and uh, gents who are inspired by your journeys um, can hear from you as well. Um, Shiro, I know you also serve as the Kenya Association of Manufacturers SME Hub Chair, I believe. Um, and I wanted to ask a little bit about the engagement, private sector and, and government, because a lot of what I'm seeing in the chat also talks about issues of constraints that people have, challenges that they have. Um, and I know having been a serial entrepreneur, you've probably you have hands-on experience with some of these things. So maybe if you could just, um, as, we, as we start to wrap up, if you could just shed a little bit of light uh, on those uh, issues um, and anything else you may want to touch on uh, as, we, as we begin to wrap. Shiro. Uh, thanks, June. Um, fantastic conversations. Um, on Twitter, I posted, I did a sort of a tease and I said the theme was purple um, and I had intended to wear purple, but thanks to KRA, they took away some colors that would have mixed my uh, yellow to make purple, but that was a joke. However, it is a reality on the ground with what happens in our businesses. Taxes are real, right? Now, 
what I have found and the reason why we, we then ended up having this um, SME hub within Kenya Association of Manufacturers is, um, first of all, SMEs are so diverse. And what I'm loving, especially uh, that has come across in the pandemic is the number of smaller or smaller businesses, right? That have come across from home. Even I was working from home. We've heard about the value addition of food and the quality is fantastic. I think what has not happened is the policies or the policy makers have not moved at the same speed as entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs don't sleep, we don't sleep, we move at the speed of light, we, uh, we move for survival. And what I have found the value of having a, a hub within a bigger a body like CAM is that there's been experience. CAM is what, 60 years old? That's a lot of experience to learn from. They've, they've been creating policies and being a part of shaping manufacturing in this country for a while. So what I would advise, um, whether you're, you're starting with one jar of, of jam, one jar of peanut butter, of, you know, um, I'll just give a shout out if I may, Pauline Obabat. I mean, these are the best plantain chips. I think I must be her best customer ever. She's one of our members and it's unbelievable what comes out of um, what is perceived as a small business. Others people call it cottage industries, but we're so many now. And it's been such a joy seeing them grow. But all I would say is join, join an organization like CAM, be active, not just join. Um, a lot of the times we're like, what can it do for us? But what can you do also? It's, it's possible when we make a bigger noise, when you make a small noise, you're kind of on your own and you're seen as this pity party. But when you come together and sit at the table with the bigger boys, those who've gone before you, number one, the mentorship happens that was talked about, but also people then get to understand what your, your pain points are. Um, two weeks ago, we visited um, two um, SMEs in the industrial area who are members of CAM. It was fascinating just to hear what their actual challenges are, but beyond hearing, we actually saw, were able to relate. We become champions for each other. Uh, many times, um, um, our chair, um, Shai, Phyllis, CEO will be in a room where they can actually speak on our behalf, but it's difficult for us to champion what the causes are and the pain points are when we don't know what you're going through. So please, I urge smaller businesses, it doesn't matter if you're operating from your house. I did that the whole of last year. That's how it starts. Join us. Um, we, we actually do look forward to being um, with you, walking this journey with you, and hopefully the policy makers will recognize us when more of us knock down that door. And if they don't open the door, I believe we'll build our own door or we'll build our own room. So it's not in vain. Um, if you look at it again, six years of manufacturing is not a long time for a country. Um, so this, I feel, is the beginning. It's it's painful at the beginning, but like a seed when it's planted, you know, we, we must nurture it. I am extremely, extremely hopeful. I've walked this journey for a while, but I also now know that the more of us who come together and mm. make a positive noise, and sometimes not so positive, we do get heard, but beyond getting heard, we do get things moving. I, I have absolute faith in Kenya Association of Manufacturers to take this forward. We're solid in our policies, solid in our research, yes. and solid in our cause for manufacturing. So please, that, that's what I would say. This you. is this the, is, the really call important. to action is join us. Join us Absolutely. now. You have an amazing... And be, active. <laughs> and be active. And be active so that you can make a positive noise. I like that. I like that. Thank you, Shiro. Uh, finally, Amina. Amina. Um, Amina, if you're, if you're still with us, I wanted to ask you just a couple of uh, uh, pointers that you could share with us. But even as I do that, thank you again for the engagement on uh, Facebook. I see Rachelle Mjamlek saying, very inspiring session. Ruth Waiderero saying, we need mentorship through and through. Mentorship is the only way to leave a legacy. Elizabeth Alich. And of course, Joseph Wakesa says, this is very encouraging for SME. So thank you for continuing to engage. Remember, our hashtag Hashtag is W-I-M-K-E. Now, Amina, as we begin to, to close and we have an amazing final thing that we want to do with all of you, so please do not log off. Thank you. I see you're still over 100 participants with us and we appreciate you spending your time because this is a very, very important conversation. Amina, this umbrella association that you've set up um, requires that women begin to take this Chiniyamaji attitude and put it away. 
and start to do business above the radar, on, on the table, registering their companies, getting the correct licenses, if I understood what you shared earlier. Now, if you had to summarize it in just three points um, as you close, for the women who are listening who want to join you, what are the three things you would say that women need to remember even as they think about scaling within this crisis? What is your nugget of hope, if you will, Amina? Um, thanks, June. Just to, before I get to the three points, I'd just like to add up, uh, um, um, add to what uh, Shiro had said uh, earlier on. The challenges of getting registration and, uh, and also working with some of these ministries are definitely uh, difficult, no doubt about it. Uh, and that's the reason why ATR was formed. Now, we came across uh, a challenge uh, uh, from KETS that in 2019, they said that none of the uh, uh, cottage industries would actually be making their product from their kitchen, which they used to, right? So what happened was the, the, the question we were asking was now, if they can't do it from their kitchen, then where? Then they suggested, okay, we could actually operate from uh, uh, maybe the garage or maybe put up a structure next to your house or even work from your SQ and set a little miniature factory. But how many of us actually have that kind of space? We don't, right? So ATR, um, as a founder, I came up with this idea that I needed to set up an incubation facility, which we called it GECO Incubation Manufacturing Facility. And I'd like to thank CAM, being a CAM member myself, um, that uh, with Ndita uh, and also with the help of uh, an officer from, from KEPS, we were able to collaborate with some of our members in that meeting and actually find a solution to our problem. Our problem was we can't work in our G-code, as you can see, I'm sitting next to the fridge because of the lights. <laughs> so here we are now having a place that we've named Jico, and now we can have our women get certified there. That's one of the things we've achieved, and I'm really, I'm very proud to say this. And I'd like to continue by saying, after you get certified, right, as, as a, a, a micro SME, SME, what happens is that you have to get your products to the retail outlets, places like Nivus and Carrefour. Now, majority of us, when we go there with two or three products, we can't enter those doors. I've been knocking Carrefour doors since 2016. But two years ago, thanks to come again with Joyce and Dita, who actually has been working towards getting a meeting with the managing director of Carrefour, mm. we were able to understand why. And he was very clear. He said he would not be able to take individual SMEs because there were too many in numbers and our products are limited. So but they like to deal with bigger distributors. And I, again, we're, we're, we're hitting that wall. And I said, OK, fine. So what we'll do is set up a distribution company. So we did. We set up an ATR distribution company. About a month ago, Cam had a meeting uh, with Carrefour, which I attended. And right now, we've actually issued a letter to Cam. And Cam is forwarding our letter. Uh, Phyllis, I hope you're listening. And, uh, and, and Duta. And that letter, if it gets to Carrefour, then that means that we will be able to enter that door. Yeah? So those are challenges we've had, but we've been able to work around those challenges. And nothing is going to stop us as the ATR women, nothing. So whatever it is that you're bringing forward, we will definitely find a solution to it or an answer to it. Thank I, you, Jim. I I believe you. I believe you completely. And I think it's so apt that you are in your kitchen right now. <laughs> I think that is, it, it It could not have written itself better. This script could not have written itself better. Your entire message is now clear. Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies. I wish we had more time, but um, you have shared such amazing nuggets. I feel hopeful. I think the, the energy on the chat group, Jane Dungo says, great encouragement uh, from Shiro. Thank you. Well done to all the panelists, Tina Kimoto says. Great panel, powerful insights, moms in business. Uh, Joyce Wairimo is saying that she is in apparel manufacturing. She'd like to connect. She shared her email address. Um, Duta has a specific question for you, Amina. Again, more information on your incubator and your association. So ladies, if you're comfortable to do so, share your handles uh, and any information that you would like with everybody who's tuned in so that you can continue to network, to engage. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you, Jedida. Thank you, Amina. Thank you, Shiro. You're all amazing and thank you for being a part of this.
held this conversation, um, for being part of the conversation with women in manufacturing, for being uh, lights and stars out there that we can continue to follow and be inspired by, even in this COVID pandemic. You've given us hope. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So welcome back. If you had left to go and grab yourself some water, we're still here and it's about time for us to actually put uh, money where our mouths are. We said that we were going to recognize individual organizations and people who have done amazing things within their space of manufacturing and we want to just recognize what it is that they've done and we'll be doing that shortly. But I want to ask Sadia who is with us uh, from Canada to just greet us. Uh, Sadia Lakhel is the head of the Global Women in Manufacturing uh, organization. She runs an event where she opens the market up for us to be able to do business. And I think since we've listened to the local context, it would be wonderful for us to hear from Sadia, who has strong experience in industrial networking and knowledge of the manufacturing sector. She seeks to improve the competitive positioning and level the competitiveness of manufacturers who are supported by her uh, global women in manufacturing organization. She does various things. She's also in the agri-tech space and has two summits, the Agritech Summit and the Global Women in Manufacturing uh, Summit that she initiated to be able to promote diversity and inclusion within a very perceived to be male-dominated industry. So without much further ado, Ms. Sadia Lakhel, founder and CEO of very many organizations and my good friend. Uh, bonjour, Madame Sadia, bonjour et bienvenue. Bonjour, merci beaucoup. This is me showing off. Good evening. Good evening and good morning where you are. Thank, Thank you. you so much for this invitation and for the opportunity. I'm so glad, so honored to celebrate with you today with the Women's Success and a special thank to every women sister across the world for all their great effort to make our world a better place and especially for women in industry. Also, thanks for the team of CAM and for excellent work uh, you are doing for women in manufacturing. Thank you so much. Sadia, thank you and welcome. Uh, very briefly, you've heard a lot of the sharing this evening uh, from our women in manufacturing here in Kenya. Very simply, how can we do business with you and other women and other organizations uh, on a global scale? What would your guidance be based on your years of experience? Thank you so much, and uh, it's very important about this question uh, to go through a uh, dream and uh, act. It's very important. Yes, I am uh, as an ambassador of women in manufacturing and agri-tech globally. I'm traveling to the world from four continents to empower women, girls, to go through this industry and it's an opportunity for great jobs, for more than uh, great salaries from this industry. And uh, yes, I launched this summit, it's uh, about a vision and the vision is uh, to uh, objective to uh, go through 1 million women in manufacturing agri-tech to uh, 2030. So yes, the Global Women in Manufacturing is uh, bring together a diverse group of business leaders from industry globally and uh, come together to connect, strengthen and tight support, be a positive change agent and present solution in an enchanting world, uh, reading with uh, uh, unprecedented and challenges that affect our consumer, our employees and our communities. So as founders, as business leaders to grow and succeed, we have had to be creative, passionate, and optimistic. So future oriented and resourceful and resilient about the solution because the new entrepreneur leader, they are a solution entrepreneur society. So the summit will explore how do we use this attribute to not only successfully get through these current challenges, but discuss the future transformation 
and the opportunities in growing industry and emerging technology is very important. So the growth uh, of globally this uh, program is uh, its event will bring together a large number of uh, influence women politicians because we need all parts of the society for government and uh, for entrepreneurs. They are the future of this economy. So uh, it's major played also with the technology. You know, with the COVID we are living now, it's uh, no doubt we are in global digital world it's a village everything is connected so the message i want to share with you with this summit uh, it's a place it's a platform where we uh, dialogue and act because it is important to act and don't wait to dream or to hope just do it and see what's happening by the way so it's an excellent opportunity for business women to meet leaders through conferences, workshops, roundtables, and B2B, and we have a lot of business industrial to see what's happening on the ground about the technology and the future of the manufacturing. And it will be able them to discover the best practice of industry solution, develop a new technology, so they can better contribute to connect the optimum side and creative industry. So the summit will also highlight the importance of uh, attracting and hiring new women in manufacturing and, uh, of course, ag debt sector and motivating a new generation to propose uh, of rewinding. So the good news, uh, I'm traveling through the world with this summit and uh, I'm preparing a varied agenda for global women manufacturing agri-tech Africa and uh, Kenya is on the top of agenda. Nice. So we will go with you and coming to you with delegations to the world to share with you experiences. And uh, I'm very, very uh, glad and honored that we had the partnership with CAM and uh, with their uh, work uh, very important to access the global market and to have advantage to modernize the process. Uh, we know that uh, the area of the food processing, for example, is expanding to rapidly adopt processing yes. technologies. And uh, automatization, uh, data manufacturing can speed the product innovation and growth. And uh, women in manufacturing Africa, I believe that uh, uh, the future of Africa, to stand a new space of Africa, will rely on women. And we rely also yes. that uh, they are brave women, they are here, they just need to uh, funding and give just opportunities. Okay. And uh, yes, so I, I can give you just a, a few ideas what's happening affordably globally. Uh, the observation in the same everywhere in the world, it, women are clearly underrepresented in manufacturing jobs as well as in all trade technology and the trade. Unfortunately, we have, if we can give you just uh, uh, numbers about 33% sub level, 24% intermediate level, in fact, only person hold CEO position in this sector and by 15 are in high level. So we want to hide, to increase all this position with women to better have opportunities this to contribute. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Sadia, thank you so much. Those statistics are shocking. Could you please put them in the chat? Type the statistics that you've shared in the chat so that women uh, and the participants can also get that. So, ladies and gentlemen, the answer was, I couldn't have put it more clear myself. If you want to get access to a lot of these global markets, you need to position yourself. Sadia says, just do it. Don't wait. Join the women in manufacturing. Join... And that was just a little more information for you on women in marketing. Um, and I really just want to highlight a few of the things that Sadia shared, because she spoke about the fact that women are experiencing the same sort of challenges globally. And, and she herself is from Egypt, but she's living and working in Canada. So that transition already is, a, is, an, is evidence of being able to access a global market. She also shared that technology is the way we are doing biz business now. Uh, digital uh, platforms are what we need to leverage to be able to 
access different markets, not just locally, but also in other countries. And she encourages us not to sit and wait, um, that it's a complete fallacy that women are not manufacturers. So get up and do not wait and just do it. For more information, you can uh, follow Sadia. Her, her details were in the bio, I believe. And if you want to hear a little bit more about the organization, she is the founder of Women in Manufacturing on a Global Scale. So please look out for her contact information and get to know a little bit more about uh, the way in which you can leverage uh, the summit and the networks that she has. Now, I have brought my girlfriend up here because we are the only two people in this entire party. Uh, we wore our outfits and we want both of you to see us. So now what we're going to do is proceed into our wo Women in Manufacturing Recognition Awards for the year 2020. And here is the first category. Small and micro companies or enterprises, best practice and innovation. This particular enterprise demonstrated and outlined inclusion of innovations and best practice in their functionality. And the award goes to... Scrumptious Eats. Yes! Oh, there we go. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> See, we had to make it feel like we're in an award ceremony. You know, like you the know, Grammys. Drums just rolling. Happened. Drums rolling you and know. everything. Or well, right. maybe between the two of us, we can, we can make some drums rolling. I think so. <laughs> this is... <laughs> we're being creative and you we're know, pivoting. You know. All right. Second, we go to medium enterprise. Companies, um, basically for organization and government structures. Well outlined um, organizational structures and policies that govern the business. And of course, you know, this lays the foundation for any business that you want to, 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 to build. Indeed. And, and this goes to... The award goes to... Trump, 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 here we go. Line Plast Group, congratulations. receive the, the award and the applause. <laughs> All right, next, we want to recognize multinational companies who have supported women in the value chain and the Kenya Association Women in Manufacturing Program, very specifically. And these are none other than, the award goes to Coca-Cola Beverage Africa. <laughs> and... Bata Kenya. No, B-A-T. Oh, let's do that again. All and right. the award goes to Coca-Cola Beverages Africa. <laughs> and one of our sponsors, my apologies, B-A-T Kenya. Drum roll. <laughs> I must attest to that one because um, even today and, and, and previous years, mm -hmm. you know, when we say we're going to do a women in manufacturing, there's always like, let's raise some funds, yes. let's sell some dinner tickets. And we always get these people who come out and say, hey, you know what? We are believe here. in this cause. Yes. And, and I, I, I mean, I could totally attest to that completely. I mean, they are one of your sponsors today, so we want to thank them. And especially when we couldn't sell dinner tables, you know. So Very um, true. Fantastic. Very true. Thank very you very true. much. And well done, Coca-Cola Beverages Africa and BAT Kenya as our multinational oh, goodness, companies. I'm in shock. Yeah. I <laughs> could you... Oh, Sadly. could you... Uh, thank you, <laughs> You're in shock. Why are you in shock? <laughs> Beverly, receive it. Receive it. <laughs> like, just, just this feels like an award ceremony. She's like, I want to thank my mom. I want to thank my family. <laughs> I want to come and receive the award. <laughs> I want to thank God. Beverly, well done. Well done. And thank you for being such a consistent partner as Flora has attested. Did you want to make some remarks? You were just excited. <laughs> Sh okay, she <laughs> says she, she's given us a thumbs up. All right, let's All right, proceed. Just, June, June, just before you proceed, I just want to clarify that that was for 2020, 2019, 2020. Yes. This is what we would have given out last time. Yes. Um, so this year, of course, as you know, we are, you know, there was too much going on, a lot True. of unprecedented, but we do have some <laughs> recognition awards. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask that Sadia. we just mute our... Uh, Microphones, if we could kindly. Could you meet them from here? Mm -hmm. So that we can just 
Okay, I think we're all good now. And we can continue with our recognition uh, award ceremony. And now we'd like to recognize the Women in Manufacturing Recognition Awards for 2021. Now, these are people or entities or uh, counties that we want to s who have celebrated the women in manufacturing in their respective counties and have also recognized their efforts in driving inclusivity within the manufacturing sector. And we want to recognize the following people. In the Eastern Region, the award goes to... Drum. Here we go. Jane Ndungo from the Safal Group. That sounds like you're really doing a good job. <laughs> well done, Jane. Thank you. And of course, from, from the Coast Region, the award goes to... Pauline Karanja of Mwanainchi Bakeries. A lady I know well. Well done. Well done, Pauline. For the North Rift region, the award goes to... Drum, bang the table. Rachel Miami or Miami of Ram Millers. Congratulations, Rachel and Ram Millers. Do you think there's something in milling? I think something. Baking. Is. Yeah, Something also, I like how RAM is also the acronym for her name. You know. Rachel, we see what you did there. <laughs> well done. Great branding. <laughs> Next region. We have the South Rift region, and this one goes to... Marion Waithera of Marlow Link Timber Products. Marlow Link Link. Timber products. Congratulations, Marion. You look like a young can sister. Show, can she show her ID? I mean, <laughs> literally. Does she have an ID? Do you see? The age range wow. is massive. Fantastic. It doesn't matter Fantastic. how old you are when you start. She's a timber engineer. Wood oh, engineer. Wood engineer. Oh I didn't goodness. even know that wow. was a thing. Did wow. you know that no, was a thing? not at all. Not at well all. Well done, Marion Waithera. Well done, well done, well done. For you to have been spotted by our scouting team, well done. Very well done. And we also have the Kisumu and Western region. And here, the award goes to... Drum, 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 drum. Christine Giacchino of Building Concepts. <laughs> And Christine is wearing her mask, so she has still been able to achieve all of this in this COVID pandemic while she's been wearing her mask. Congratulations, Christine Giacchino. And we also have a special particular award. But before you go there, I'm just, yes. just going to say, I just love the fact that now these are not just the traditional areas where you find women. Yes. You know, we have the building, we have the wood engineer, we yes. have, you know, it's, 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 it's getting deeper, ladies. And this is the whole purpose of women in manufacturing, for us to network and for us to grow each other in this non-conventional um, areas, areas or sectors. Exactly. I like that. I like that. Exactly. So there's no boundaries. This one you have to allow me to do. I, this one you have to do. Very, very close to my heart. During this pandemic, we saw people who stopped what they were doing, were never at home. Remember, women were told to be at home. I mm. mean, we're all told to be at home, and who's the person who gets all, everything done? Mm -hmm. It's always the woman. Very true. And I know somebody who worked around the clock, made sure everything was going on. By the way, never broke a sweat. You know, like, ooh, you I'm know, tired. we're going on lockdown, and ooh, we're not Nothing. gonna be able to run our factory. I'll sort that out. I'll know what I can do. I'll, f I'll, f I'll escalate that. This is somebody who really went over and above. Yes. Somebody I feel very passionately about mm -hmm. um, for going over and above to ensure that manufacturers kept Kenya moving. Guys, our doors were not locked. We still got our food. We still got everything that we needed mm. as much as we were at home. This award goes to the one and only. Drum, 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 Miss Phyllis Wakiaga. Aww. Our very own CEO here at CAM. Congratulations, <laughs> Phyllis. She didn't, you see, I love how excited <laughs> this award ceremony is making all I of us feel. That. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Do you want to come and receive your award? your award? Oh, receive no, your award. I and didn't know. Thank you. 
No, you deserve it. You deserve it. I, she's very right. Thank As you. As somebody who was on the receiving end, yes. I was able to order my food. I was able to order the things I needed. And that would not have been possible if you didn't spend the time that you did to ensure that Kenya kept moving. Thank you, Phyllis, on and, behalf of everybody. And I know her home didn't come to a standstill. Yeah, oh, <laughs> as well. As well. As well. You know? Finally, but definitely not last, but uh, not least and not last, the Inclusivity Legend Award. This recognizes an individual that has played an active role in championing the inclusivity agenda and has been an advocate on issues regarding gender, sustainability, and economic empowerment. And the award goes to... Ms. Beverly Spencer Obatoimbo. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> Surprise, we got gotcha. you. That was the first one was for the organization. This one <laughs> is personal. Is for you. This is personal. Miss Beverly. <laughs> Can you hear me? I'm yes, we can. We can see you. We can hear you. <laughs> it's your your face expression is priceless. <laughs> well done and well congratulations. Done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Again, oh, something That's I can attest very, to. Very, very. Uh, I'm honoured. Honestly, thank you. You're very thank, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, it's about that time, ladies and gentlemen. We want to thank you for tuning in and staying with us as we have this conversation. We have one more video, but we'd like you to continue uh, engaging with us. Thank you for all your posts. Thank you for all the amazing appreciation for our speakers, our panelists. Laura Jean Lewis uh, says, inspiration and informative. Thank you for sharing. Glad to be a part of this wonderful dinner, wonderful conversations here. That's Anne Moshiri. And of course, Evelyn Magadju says, this has all been very informative. Flora? Well, for me, because I know this is about, w about it, uh, before we go to the vote of thanks, allow me to say that this did not happen on my own. Mm. Of course, we must thank the Secretariat at CAM. And I don't know where she is, but there's somebody who drives this women in manufacturing. Sally Kahio, can you put your camera on? <laughs> Sally? This is somebody who... <laughs> Hi, oh. Sally. Somebody who has really gone out of her way. Sally has maybe five to ten meetings in a day, and we still say, and whim? <laughs> what, what are we doing about whim? <laughs> and she'll politely, politely say, I'll call you back, and she'll get on it. Thank you. Sally, thank you very, very much. I do know you have a crazy schedule, and I do know your assistant is Rose Hilda. Rose Hilda? You know, she's back there, backstage somewhere. I wish you could come forward and we see her. But I, yes, she can. Yes, she's, she can. She's in her, in her army now, gear. She, yeah, <laughs> she came ready to work, guys. It's not purple. It's not pink. But um, Well done, Rose Hilda. Thank yeah, you. She's you also been Rose, such a great Rose, support for me. Yeah, Rose She's Hilda. telling me what's happening on all the platforms. Thank you so much you know, um, for all that you have done. So th these are not, this is something they do over and above their day job. So mm. that is why I'm calling them out. We have a huge, well, it's not a huge team. We have a team over here <laughs> of um, technicians and, and people just say, Hi. Masked, masked just, technicians. Just, just, you know, <laughs> believe me, they're here, they're here, they're here. They don't want to turn the camera. <laughs> and um, I, right. I, guess, I guess for me, to my WIM committee, um, we, have, we have quite a number of them. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed, you know, there's Go um, ahead. Marion. There's, um, there's, Ma Marianne, there's Marianne, there's Mary Getchu, of course there's Phyllis. Um, and my pr the problem with naming them is in case you miss, miss any. anybody. Yes. But for the <laughs> WIM steering committee, um, let me just make sure because these women, I, like I told you, yes. we had save, to reframe their name. We had to reframe, we had to refocus. We were speaking on Saturdays and Sundays. So we have um, Mary Achola, um, Lina Giduka, Irene Wanjiku, Susan Maingi. Um, and Mary Ngechu, who's our chairperson, you'll hear from her, mm -hmm. and um, of course Phyllis. These are women that we were speaking severally, especially in the last one, two weeks. Yes. Thank you very, very much, ladies. You really, really were agile, and you were able to pull this through. 
from me. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you for being such a great entertainment. Oh, it's been and my there pleasure. is a request for one more dingy, <laughs> a dingy? ditty. A ditty. There a is a request ditty. for that. <laughs> Good night. Thank you so much, Ms. Flora Mutahi, the Women in Manufacturing Chairperson. Thank you for doing this particular part of this award recognition with me. It was all the more special. And now we have a little video that we want to share with you, so please pay attention to your screens. And when we come back, the Vice Chair of the Kenya Association Women in, Mac in Manufacturing, uh, Ms. Mary Ngechu, will close for us. Thank you. The idea of including women into the manufacturing sector is not an if, and when question, it really is an immediate course of action that anyone in the sector needs to take to make sure that we mainstream women into the sector. This will enhance sector productivity and competitiveness. The reason why any woman in the industry should join women in manufacturing is because women in manufacturing is the community that any young entrepreneur, female entrepreneur needs. Uh, we will be there to support you. We will be there to affirm your vision. We will be there to give you um, positive critique. We will be there to ensure that you believe in yourself so that you can bring the best of yourself and your talent into the sector in order to then make the manufacturing sector competitive. This community of women also introduces you to mentorship programs, linkages, access to markets and training opportunities. So even where you feel like you're disadvantaged or you lack, we will be there to to lift you up, we will be there with you to make sure that you are empowered and you are enabled to pursue your dreams. Thank you, thank you. That was Sally Cahio, and I hope you heard her words and took them to heart. Now, we asked you a question at the beginning. Did you listen and honor our request to wear pink or purple? or both. And you will notice that you have now all been promoted to panelists. So here is the real test of the pudding. We want you to switch your videos on, ladies and gents. And now if you if you if you did not, June is gonna see. <laughs> oh Beverly, we see you. This is when you're dressing. Beverly's like let me wear my sweater right now. All right, don't be afraid ladies. Switch on your videos. Lina Giduka, I see you. Is that a top? Is that a dress? Hi. Gillian Obaso, I see black and white. Sister girl, where? where? And she's having her dinner. Where is the purple? Where is it? Is it the eyeshadow, like me today? Winning Gumi, I see you. You look gorgeous. Nice, deep, royal purple. I like it. Sarah Alberg, you went to the root. You're, you took the red, which features in pink and also features in purple. Thank you for sharing your contact information. I'm sure people will get in touch with you. Let's see who else. Patricia. Patricia is in pink. Hello, Patricia. Gorgeous. I love it. Catherine Wangi. This is baby pink. Okay, we're doing shades of some of these colors. I like that. Evelyn, I see you as well. Evelyn, are you, is that a dark purple? What did I see? I think I saw Evelyn in a dark, is it a dark purple? Okay, she's being honest. From here, it looks like a dark purple, but it's lovely to see you. Thank you for joining us. Juliet Awar, I, Odor, I see your, it's red with a bit of gold. Okay, okay, I see it, I see it. I also saw somebody at the bottom of my screen. There's so many of you. <laughs> You're almost 100 in number. So I'm trying to make sure that as you switch on your videos, I recognize all of you. Jane Dungo, I see you. Congratulations for being one of our, <laughs> of our winners. Marion Wangi has both purple and a pink shawl. I see you. Well done. Gorgeous. Absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. Marion Wambua, I also see you. Your, your, your turtleneck or your top inside seems to be like a maroonish. Is that right? Did I get it right? Maroonish purple? Or is it more deep pink? It's actually dark purple. See? See? I have good eyesight. I have good eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> well done. You look amazing. Let's see who else is here. 
so I can see who has been listening to us. Carol Aquino, yes, girl. Accessorize. I, yes, yes, all of the yeses. Here you go. Receive the snaps. Lucy Grace, I see Carol you too. Aquino, yes, girl. <laughs> Accessorize. I'm, I'm hearing my voice. Thank you. Uh, who did I see? Lucy Grace. I see you, Lucy Grace. Thank you for wearing pink. I also saw somebody at the top of the screen. Right here. Hello, Nduta. How are you? You look amazing. <laughs> and I see you have like diamonds or some shiny things at the, on your collar. Okay, so yes. it's fancy pink. I absolutely love it. Caroline Mavuti. I see you too. Thank you for being here with us. Is there a pink somewhere? Is there? <laughs> She's like, hey, girl. I see you. Thank you. Thank you for spending your evening with us. Hey, Juliet Karanja. Uh -uh. What is that now? A jewelry on top. <laughs> and the hair is matching the jewelry. You are not coming to play. You are not coming to play. All right, I love that. Let's see. I have to, I'm so confused right now. I'm like, I'm loving the accessories. Okay, let me see. Who else? Who else? You have to switch your videos on, ladies. Rosalind Rapando. I see a purple curtain. Are you wearing purple? You, you yourself? Or is your backdrop purple? Rosalind is frozen. Maybe she's adjusting things. We'll wait and give you a chance. Anybody else who has not switched on your video, remember we are giving away a present. So the only way you are eligible to win is if June's eyes see you wearing the correct colors. Uh -huh. Yes, Patricia. Patricia has now focused on the pink. I see you. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? So many of you are still without your videos on. Violin, I don't see your video on. Let's go back this way so I can call out some of these names. Tina Kimodo, Violin, Nzioka, Joanne, Achieng, Simon. Simon. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Simon is still here. He already won a hamper, but I want to see if you wore either pink or purple. Muneng Guta, thank you for being with us. Nancy N. Judy Ingino, thank you, Agnes Warionge, for being here. Jenga Daniel, Nancy Matimu, all of you have made this evening worth it. Even though we felt you, we couldn't see you, but we really appreciate that you took the time. So for those whose videos are on, it is now time to pick a winner. Doom, doom, doom. Okay, P Pierina, I see you have joined us. Welcome. And I like that bob, girl. I like that bob. Jenga Daniel, if you don't switch on your video now, you are losing the opportunity. Okay, so between Flora and I, let me consult. This is the fashion uh, committee that's about to make the decision. Uh, your life is about to change, ladies. One of you is about to put something else on their CV. Hmm? Scroll up. Oh, Flora, come, come up. Come up, Flora. <laughs> All right, so Flora, for me, uh -huh. those accessories and that matching hair jewelry thing is, is doing something for me. It, I love the simplicity of Carol Aquino's, that bow. It's mm -hmm. just like she is a present. She is our present. Mm -hmm. Like she was a gift. I um, love the purple of uh, Winning Gumi. Winning Gumi is purple mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. yes. And she, ooh, yes, her eyebrows are doing, mm -hmm. yeah. choose me. And Look at Jenga Mercy. Daniel. We have Jenga Mercy Daniel Achola also. there. She's got, is it a purple, pink, blue? Is that, I think it's like a deep blue she's that's almost like purple. The side. I think we've got purple somewhere going on. Even Mercy Achola has a, a mix of colors there. There's a nice print in the middle. Yes. What do you, th I feel like we can give two. Can we give two? We can give. But look at Marianne. Even Mary, you know, our, our panelists it's tough. It's tough. Were, were really like... Uh, they, they honored our, even Beverly wore a sweater. You saw she wore a sweater I, I, I just she at the sweater. end over there. Is this mm. the only screen? Mm. Is this there is, another screen? This is how Kenyans called salt. What about, uh, you know how we use our mouths? You know, we do, you what about uh, you nani, nani over there? They're there in the top left corner. So, so what do you think? think otherwise, otherwise? Otherwise, <laughs> likewise, likewise is likewise, the response. Likewise. So I think um, my, oh, my, my boss her. tells me we can give up to four. Five. We can give five. Oh, they're uh, so generous. They're so generosity. Generous. 
All right, so five gifts. You pick two, I pick two, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to ask a guy <laughs> to Ooh. pick the other one. So, all right, Flora, you the go guy, first. The colorblind guys? The colorblind guys can pick. Okay, so ladies, the ones we're not in our color she's. still have a chance. Okay, pick the first one. Let's go back to our first screen. And the first award it goes, goes to... to... Oh, my God. Winning Gumi. Winning Gumi is our first winner. Ah! Yeah! I want to thank my mom. I want to thank my sister who bought me this sweater. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, even the nails. nails. Ooh, good girl. Hey. You see, we knew it. We, we knew. knew it. We knew Seen it. and acknowledged. <laughs> Seen and acknowledged. All right. The second <laughs> award goes to... Juliet Kanja! Hey! When in doubt, accessorize. You know? Hey! Look, look at that. So oh, what is going cool. on with the hair? Is it like your hair? Did you add things? Yes. Is it locally available? Yes. Is it a Kenyan manufacturer? It's actually been here. Oh my god. It's oh your my. hair hair? So you bleached it's it? my hair. You it bleached is. it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Girl, you're looking amazing. Was it only for today? Thank what you. Are, is it going to change color tomorrow? No, no, oh, okay. no. Okay, okay, okay. And the nails. The nails too. Years. Let's see your nails. Let's see the nails. For me today. Let's see your nails. <laughs> Let's see. Did no, you do my what? Nails are not made. Oh, oh, okay, okay. We need that one is still it's yours. <laughs> All right, that's our second winner. Quickly, let's award our third winner, Flora, over to you. Ooh, drums rolling. We said pink and purple. I think I like Patricia Gashoy. Hey. Bright, bright, bright pink. Patricia Gashoy. Is it Gashai? Gashai. Gashai. Oh, and you should going to get so a Gashai bold. hamper. Oh, she must get the Gashai hamper. And who it's is so that? Oh, hi. <laughs> That's a he for she. Hello. Is it a she for she? Ah. Congratulations. Con that pink is so gorgeous. It's giving us so Thank much you. warmth and so much life all the way here. Okay. Thank you for being with us. You are our third winner. And hello, my good friend who've hung out with us amazing you know? women. <laughs> <laughs> our fourth winner. Let's see. Back to the gallery view so that we can award our fourth winner. Du -dum, du -dum, du -dum, du -dum. Are we allowed to award the panelists? Uh, are we allowed to award the panelists, teacher? Oh, yeah, because we are looking at one of them here. All right, yeah. then the next one goes to Marianne Musangi. Marianne Musangi! I love, I love. Can you see the other side? Can you see the back? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh! Yes! Ooh. Listen, no, we have Marianne, a stage. Can, can you do that one more time? I mean, this woman was, a, you are a model. One you more look, time. Look at that. Look and at wearing that. a locally manufactured outfit. You know? For princesses and queens, <laughs> locally made here in Kenya, only available <laughs> at whim. <laughs> at whim. You know? <laughs> and pink and purple. I love it. Congratulations. You're our fourth winner and our final winner. Drum roll, please. It's for you. Our final winner is none other than Marion Mwange. Marion wore both colors. She had a purple top and then she threw a shawl of pink around her neck and she's there holding her chin all the more. Woo! I love it. Congratulations, Marion. You know, and thanks for following. <laughs> and her name! <laughs> Winnie, you've got competition. Oh, so I have a question. So However, if tomorrow there's an event and mm -hmm. the, the theme is blue, are all of you going to change your hair, your nails, and your outfits tomorrow? Look at them. They're like, yes, of course. You of know. course we are. <laughs> yes, Flora. But there's one more gift. The first person to pin 
and she wore pink and she wore purple yes and we know who that was who was that cs betty mine hey she has to get a hamper and she tweeted exactly she was in the car you know wearing her earphones mm -hmm. and had her seat belt mm -hmm. on had mm -hmm. her mask on mm -hmm. and we still saw her royal purple shine too so purple cs and pink Betty Miner, congratulations. You are our final winner for tonight. And of course, just to appreciate all the other hamper winners, we would not have been able to gift you if it weren't for Kenya Wine Agencies uh, Limited and of course, uh, Melvin's as well. And I believe we had one more. Let me just make sure I don't forget anybody who is responsible for the hampers that you all are going to be getting. Uh, also want to recognize, here we go, L'Oreal. L'Oreal is our other hamper gift uh, sponsor. So Qual, Melvin's Tea, and L'Oreal. Thank you so much. All of you will be receiving one of those, and I'm sure the team from CAM has your details and will be in touch with you. How about a mix? You know, throw them in together and divide it. Oh. You know, so I get a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of that. Aki, other. Christmas has come early. Thank you so much, Laura. <laughs> Lovely, my dear. All right. I feel so warm inside after giving all those wonderful gifts and thank seeing your faces, more importantly, was, was the thing for me. Um, as I said, we felt your presence, but seeing your face um, makes it that more special. And now, at the end of what has been an amazing evening, I hope for you as it has been for me, I'd like to invite the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, WIM Vice Chair, Ms. Mary Geshu, to bring us to a close. Mary, hi. Hi. <laughs> you also look amazing, but you know now it was going to be like strange. I'll give you an, <laughs> I couldn't, you know. <laughs> Mary Ngeshu, karibu Thank sana. You so Thank you so much. And on behalf of Lane Plus Group, we are honored to receive the award and uh, we appreciate. So thank you, June. You've given us a good interactive evening for the engagement. Allow me to thank the UN Global Compact Executive Director, Misada Ojiabo, President and Founder Global Women in Manufacturing, Ms. Sadia Raquel. Thank you. Uh, our camp chair, Mr. Moshai Konyiha, our very own chair for WIM, uh, Ms. Flora Motahi, KAM Chief Executive, Phyllis Wakiaga, the WIM Steering Committee, Women Industrialists, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very honored this evening to be given this chance to thank you all, and in particular, to thank Ms. Sada Ojiabo and Sadia Lakel for joining us tonight through your busy schedule, finding time to talk to us and inspire us. Allow also me to thank the chair for your encouraging word. You have told us that we can change the workplace to suit uh, more women, uh, to be more suitable for, 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 for women. Thank you for your continued support, uh, for you supporting uh, the women in manufacturing. We don't take it for granted. Uh, thank you for being our she for our he for she are uh, supporting us you know that we are doing at the kenya association of manufacturing thank you the steering committee for giving strategic guidance to the women in manufacturing program we honor you we appreciate your thought we appreciate your hard holding so that we are able to make our women in manufacturing program successful thank you to the kam secretariat sorry Rosilda, with your guidance from the from the CEO, Phyllis Wakiaga. Thank you for the advocacy effort, the initiative geared towards supporting women in manufacturing. We appreciate you. It is because of you that we've been successful. Uh, our recap for today, we have seen great women who have talked to us. Connie has said sponsorship, mentorship, and coaching. Who are we sponsoring as women? Who are we mentoring and who are we coaching? Sada has said that it is great for us to it is important to be equal, meaningful, impactful participation for women. This is what we are doing at WIM, being, bringing equal, meaningful, impactful, and participation of women on the table. Uh, Shiro has said that it is good to panic. Oh, 
Sorry, my power just went out. But we can but hear you. I can Ata wakizimata. We can hear you. <laughs> this is called pivoting. I have my phone. You can see me on that. Shiro said it's good to panic. So allow me to panic and pack and pivot. So we have also heard from Jadida how she, she was able to maneuver with, BA, with butter. She has told us it's good to be flexible and adaptable during a uh, crisis. We have heard Marianne. Marianne has said, act quickly. The main focus, a network, network, a network. We have heard from our own Amina, powerhouse, lifting others. We appreciate you all ladies. As women, as women in manufacturing program, we promise a few things that we will continue doing. We'll continue developing models and standards that address workplace, gender gaps, we will continue strengthening the women program so that we become the voices of women in manufacturing, in policy advocacy and change dialogue that are inclusive in manufacturing. We are going to be subfacturing. We are going to build strategic partnerships in academics and with TVET institutions so that we are able to improve curriculum to, able, to be able to guide our women in manufacturing. We are going to facilitate individual companies with toolkits that provide clear guidance and indicators to gender mainstreaming and diversity in manufacturing process and management. We are going to develop incubation platform for women-owned manufacturing businesses to scale up and realize the movement of challenges faced in manufacturing sector to get data for good decision making. Ladies, today was quite engaging and we have seen how as women we can be able to uplift and empower others by sharing our stories and encouraging others. We, have, we did a report for women in manufacturing. We have taken it down to different counties. We have been to Uwasin Gishu. We've been to Machakos, Nakuru, Kitui, Nyeri, Meru, and Mombasa. Later in the year, we are going to have conferences and expos in these counties, starting with Uwasin Gishu, Nakuru, and Machakos. So look out for us in the other events that we are going to have to empower the women in manufacturing in the course of the year. We shall focus on subconstructing opportunities, access to export market and partnerships for growth. You are all invited to participate. We shall be reaching out to you with other details on these exciting opportunities for all of us. We are going to hard hold your, each other's hard. We are going to learn from each other we are going to encourage each other, build each other, so that we can grow with each other. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for giving us your time, more than three hours this night, and we hope to see you next time uh, in our next event. Thank you, June. Thank you for keeping us engaged. Thank you so much, Mary Ngeshu, for persevering. Even through those two power cuts, we appreciate you finding your own source of light <laughs> and, and powering through. Thank you so much for even just the recap um, of all the amazing speakers and panelists and all the engagement that we've had today. Uh, thank you for a beautiful recap and just for being here with us. Um, now, we, we have been instructed by Bona Chairman that we cannot possibly close this section off without awarding a certain outfit that took one year <laughs> to be made. Now, if you remember the testimony of one Flora Mutahi, said, I left it, and chair has insisted, Flora, how, how is it possible that the dress that took 12 months to finalize does not get any recognition? Do you agree with me, ladies? Do you agree with chair? And of course, we are going to have to give you a hamper. It cannot be the Melvin's one. We'll give something. So come and receive it officially. Uh, just, you know, you have to walk the way Marianne stood up and did a, this is your fashion show. So even as you walk, you will walk around here, around the podium. 
this is your walking music. And now, ladies, this fabric is special. The hands that made it did not take one day, one week, but one year. The model wearing it is now demonstrating how this shawl is attached to the side of the dress and more importantly can keep her warm in times of a cool breeze. She has maintained her weight, her shape and her height all because of this amazing dress. Ladies and gentlemen, Flora Mutai. <laughs> <laughs> and on behalf of Kenya Wine Agencies Limited, I would like to offer you Scottish Leader, a product of Scotland, blended Scotch whiskey, aged 12 years. Congratulations for you and your tailor, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and might I just mention her again, Mambo Pambo. Um, this one, since I don't drink, but uh, Taina lot. Maybe Mambo Pambo Maybe drinks, Mambo so Pambo. you can Maybe give I'll, I'll give it to her. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very, very You're much. Very but this, this is just an example of what COVID has done to small, well, very she's true. not a small business, but to businesses. Very true. So um, thank you very much. All right. And thank you, Chair, for spotting that. You truly are a he for she. You're not just, you know, you've made up for wearing blue to our purple and pink event. <laughs> So thank you for being with us and for your uh, support. All right, so we, we want to say thank you. Um, this has been amazing. We want to continue to ask that you engage with the Kenya Association of Manufacturers on their platforms. The hashtag remains uh, W-I-M-K-E. Um, so please go ahead and follow the conversations. This is just a highlight of some of the things that have been happening. But as you've heard, um, even from Mary's remarks, they are about to continue the work that they have been doing so diligently um, for the last number of years. So please, um, if you want to hear more about any of the speakers, any of the panelists, we had shared their bios. So please look for them on the social media platforms, engage with them, follow them, have the conversations, network, network, network. And to close with sad words what are you waiting for just get up and do it so we have a couple of videos but before I do that um, the words of Mary inspired me to sing one last I'll just do the chorus of this song because I feel like this is what tonight has meant for me and probably for you did you ever know that you're my hero you're everything I would like to be. And I can fly higher than an eagle with all of you as the wind beneath my wings. And I feel for me that's what tonight was. All of you supporting each other um, and being there for each other um, is really what will take us all to a new level, a new place, a new, um, a new future. So thank you so much for sharing this evening with me and allowing me to, to be your host. Um, I truly, truly appreciate it. And finally, um, just a few videos from some of our sponsors. Once again, thank you to BAT Kenya. Thank you to Safaricom. Thank you to Women in Manufacturing. And of course, the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. Have a good night. God bless. And please watch the videos. I choose to enable qual women discover their wings. I choose to challenge by creating an enabling environment that is all inclusive in qual. I choose to support women development at qual. I choose to support the growth of a fully inspired qual woman. I choose to support the creation of memorable moments for qual women. I choose to provide a secure working environment for all qual women. I choose to support in creating a confident qual woman. I choose to empower qual women in making sound financial decisions. I choose to support in the delivery of exceptional customer experience. I choose to speak up for the women who can't. I choose to be my sister's keeper. And I choose to challenge my thinking and my mindset about what I can and cannot achieve. Choose to challenge. The first guideline is to ensure that we wash our hands regularly with soap and water. We can also ensure that we use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer so that our hands are clean at all times and this will reduce the spread of the virus. 
The second issue is that we need to ensure that we do not touch our faces, either your nose, your mouth, with your hands, because that would make the virus spread and get into your bodies. The third issue is to ensure that we practice good respiratory hygiene. This basically means that anytime you have to sneeze or cough, ensure that you use a handkerchief or you use your elbow. That will also help to prevent the spread of the virus so that the droplets do not uh, move to any other person. The fourth preventive measure we can take is to practice social distancing. This basically means that you should stay at least one meter away from anyone uh, to avoid the spread of the virus. This includes avoiding handshakes and using other methods of greeting each other like waving or doing that. That ensures that you do not spread uh, the virus. The fifth thing is to watch out for any symptoms which include a high fever, coughing or irregular breathing. If you notice any of these symptoms, stay at home and seek medical advice if they become extreme.